Ladies and gentlemen, we present the Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. Considering the number of glancing blows, accidental knocks, colossal clouts, biffs, bashes and wallops that HMS Troutbridge has suffered through our draft's whimsical navigation, it's no surprise that she needs a refit desperately. <laughs> Show the pass. Well, I don't wish to be admitted, so write that on your pass and sign it. That's quite right, Fatso. You tell him. Drunk with power, that's what he is. They're all the same. A couple of yards of blue serge, half a dozen chromium buttons, a flat hat, and what have you got? Hitler. <laughs> Are you two coming in or not? In our time, my man, yes. For the next six minutes, my friend Abel Seaman Goldstein and I are still on leave. And we are spending it out here, not in there. Hello. Yeah. Johnson. What? Isn't that Mr. Phillips' old car? Yes, it was. <laughs> Hello, you chaps. You know, I could have sworn there was room to park between those two cars. <laughs> well, there is. Now you've bashed all their wings off, sir. Yes, I, I, I wonder who they belong to. Well, I can tell you that, sir. The one on the left is used by C&C &C Dockyard, and the other is the Admiral, sir. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Whose car done that? Who owns it? Uh, owns what, Constable? That car. That jam in the sandwich. <laughs> is it yours, sir? No, as a matter of fact, yes. Uh, no, no. No, no, I, no, I've never seen it before in my life. In any case, I haven't got a license for it. Oh, well. I... <laughs> so many times a evening, you will see all that's all. What's on earth? It's good. Abel Seaman Ginger, sir. I know that lurch anywhere. There. Hello, that's all. Hello, Stuffy. Hello, Blimey. <laughs> it's an officer. Ginger Beam and Sabre reporting, sir. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, bully for you. <laughs> so, me chance in the evening, you will see a dockyard. You will see... Ginger, a... if you don't get aboard this enchanting evening, all you'll see is the unenchanting rattle. <laughs> Come on. Certainly, but I shall steam there under me own get. <laughs> Want to get ready? Want to get steady? Go! So enchanted evening, you... Here, who put down this road? It's elastic. <laughs> yes, I think I'd better follow him in case that elastic road catapults him into the sea. Are you two coming in now? No, not yet, sir. We still have four minutes and 15 seconds leave left. And the chief asks us to be sure and meet him outside the dockyard gates. Oh, I see. Well, enjoy the rest of your leave. Thank you, sir. We shan't bother to send a card. <laughs> so the charge of evening, you will see a... Ah! Oh, Lord. Gingerl Beeman Sabre's having his bath night. <laughs> I'll see you aboard after I've been to the squadron office with number one and the captain. Oh, yeah, sir. Hello, a taxi. Find me just in time. Here, how much on the clock, Sterling Moss? 17 and 6. Oh, cheap at half the price. Here, right on it, me, uh, me colleague use will oblige. Here, come on, me lucky lads, cut up for John's seat. Uh. Well, now we know why we had to wait, don't we? <laughs> we were queuing up to get done. All right, All right stop muttering, lad. Stop oh, muttering. Really? He hasn't switched the meter off yet. Come on, oh. Taffy. Oh, yeah. Here, there are my men. A pan. And I'll keep the change. <laughs> oh, well, I'm here. I'm here. What's happened to the welcome back to Chiefy, then? Hey, where's the welcome back to Chiefy turnout? <laughs>
Why aren't you two waving your little flags on little pearls? <laughs> We're on leave. Yeah, for another one minute and twelve seconds, precisely. No, well, that explain. <laughs> ah, that's how. <laughs> Dear old fat's how. <laughs> yeah. How did you know what time it was? Well, I just looked at me new watch and I read it on... No, no, I didn't. No, I haven't got one. No, I, I saw the town hall clock. Bong, 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 bong. Half past. Johnson's going in. Where's me pass? Quick, come back here. <laughs> you, you come back here, dumpling body. <laughs> come on, come on out. Show me your watch. Come on. Show me your watch. I want to admire it. No, you don't. You want to knock it off. <laughs> knock it off. Knock it off. Did you hear that? Knock it off. Johnson. Johnson. How could you? Well, I couldn't, but you could. <laughs> as clean as a... <laughs> now, then, uh, Johnson, uh, how long before we have to report now, eh? Uh, coming up to 45 seconds right now. Ah, culture. <laughs> you have got a TikTok. I could scream. I think I will. Ah, that'll do. <laughs> My word. My word. Oh, that's a very handsome gent's timepiece, I must say. Well, I'm a very handsome gent. <laughs> Johnson. That watch is Abel Seaman Johnson's. It's been in my family for years. It's a family heirluminous. Heirluminous? <laughs> you mean heirloom? No, I don't. It glows in the dark. Heirluminous. Yeah, you lot! Are you coming in or not? Well, if you ask us nicely, we might, yeah. All right, all right. Show us your pass. Very well, but I'm not expecting to stay. My extension on compassionate grounds must have been delayed in the post. But me dear old white-haired mother's twinging screws. <laughs> They've got her in a voice-like grip. Just as she was coming out of these. Very nasty, I'm sure. <laughs> but save the gruesome details for your own officer. Next. <laughs> Show your pass. Here you are. But there's nothing in Queen's regulations against saying please, you know. My Aunt Gwyneth would have a go at you. She's the one for teaching manners. One word out of place and she caught you a fourpenny one with a wooden spoon right in the pudding basin. <laughs> Next, where's your pops? Here you are, it's right in me. That's funny. Oh, it must be in me. No, it's not. Perhaps I'll put it in me. Help, I've lost me part. Let me in. I want to be admittance. I chief. I want to be vouched for. Sorry, fat so. <laughs> oh, I know it wouldn't take a tick, but I haven't got the time. <laughs> Have I? <laughs> and you're something well not getting it either. Let me in. I'll get done for being absent. Yes, Johnson, you will, won't you? Who said that? Who? It's you, number one, sir. Yes, Johnson. Didn't you recognise my bell-like tones? I recognised yours about a mile away. They won't admittance me, sir. Why not? Isn't the gate wide enough? <laughs> no, sir. I lost me pass, sir. Oh, well, I'll get you in, but you want to be careful, you know. Careful, sir? Mm, you're a bit late. You want to get yourself a watch. Oh, I got one, sir. Look, it's an air luminous. Oh. <laughs> it's gone. I never felt a thing. He's whipped it off me wrist. Please. Where's your pops? Not you. I want a real one. Johnson, be off. Johnson, be quiet. <laughs> Yeah, his watch. Let me in. He's rotten. That's what he is. Rotten, rotten, rotten. Hello. Squadron office. Captain Povey here. What? No, 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 no. Captain Povey. Oh, do you think so? Oh. oh, well, I wouldn't have gone so far as to, uh, so far as richly deserved myself, but you could be right. <laughs> it's a funny thing, I just can't get used to it myself. You know what? No, no, I mean being called Captain Povey. Oh, not at all. No, nice of you to call. Uh, drop in next time you're passing. The name's on the door. Uh, Captain Povey. You can't miss it. <laughs> you know what? No, it does not light up. Goodbye. <laughs> Sour drapes. Come in. We have to report to the squadron office, sir. We're the officers from... Oh, love it. Thunderguts. 
My word, he pops up everywhere, doesn't he? Yes, Lieutenant Commander Staunton, I do. <laughs> this has come as a bit of a surprise to us, Commander Povey. We thought... Captain Povey, number one. Yes, that's what I... Come again? <laughs> Captain Povey. Oh, dear. Perhaps we've been away too long. What was that? Uh, uh, he, he said it's a pity you, you've had to wait so long. <laughs> oh, no, no, he didn't, old fruit. He said perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness me, you two have got nasty colds, haven't you? We're liable to catch another one if you don't keep quiet, sir. Now, look here. There's been an understandable delay in Proudfoot's refit, so she's not yet completed. When they got her into dry dock, the dockyard people wanted to know if you've been paying books at Daisy with every other ship in the fleet. Oh, we had, sir. Mm. What's that? Uh, Mr. Phillips said that's uh, bad, sir. Yes, thank you, sir, yes. One all. Sir. <laughs> you know, I'm a proper old cloth ears today. <laughs> I could have sworn Phillips said we... <laughs> Uh, if you ask me, you two ought to be in the sick bay. You're in a shocking state, you know. Mm, so was Troutbridge, Lieutenant Commander Sarton. Was she really? Well, I, I, I'm not surprised. You're not? No, no, old Mudhook. Every time we, uh, every time we put to sea, we played bumps and daisy with every. <laughs> <coughs> These two won't last the night, you know. Um, Commander. Captain. Uh, Captain Povey, are we to understand that? You're now commanding the squadron here? I am. Hmm? Uh, well, in that case, um, those chaps had better get a move on with the refit so that we can get back to the island. <laughs> There's no hurry. Didn't I tell you? Tell us what, sir? You're not going back to the island. During your leave, I've had it paid off. Oh, that's jolly nice of you, sir, taking the trouble to... I don't think I feel very well. <laughs> Mr. Phillips. Uh, sir? If we're not going back to the island... Yes, sir? Which of us is going to tell C.P.O. Pertwee? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, I just had a thought. Sir, sir, what about, what about Heather? Good heavens, yes. One moment, gentlemen. Come in. You buzzed, sir. Heather. Oh, lummy. <laughs> Gracious. I believe you know my new secretary, gentlemen? Oh, yes. Intimately. Mr. Phillips! Uh, um, what? Yes. Um, uh, how do you do, madam? Uh, uh, ha haven't we met somewhere before? We have, but I doubt if we ever shall again. At least, not until I find out which of you two fixed me up with this ducky little draft. Well, it wasn't us. We've been drafted, too. Oh, well, that settles it. Just wait till I get my hands on CPO Pertwee. Oh, that's a good idea. What is? Y you can tell him we're not going back to the island. Rest assured, gentlemen, I have reserved the pleasure of imparting this particular little bit of news to the chief myself. I can hardly wait. Well, I'm afraid you may have to, sir. The chief of the dockyard police wants you to ring him at once. Oh, does it? What is it this time? Well, somebody's wrecked two staff cars by trying to park in between them. What? <laughs> One belongs to the CNC and the other belongs to the Admiral. I say, I wouldn't like to be the chap who owns the one in the middle. Da 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 You were saying, Mr. Phillips? Was I, sir? Well, don't let me in future. <laughs> I, I, I mean, um, I... Uh, cool. Uh, uh, mm, did you enjoy your leave, sir? Yes, thank you. What did you do? Oh, just motoring around. <laughs> yes, I thought you might have done. I take it your car's well run in now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Remarkably well, sir. Will you two stop chuntering? Heather, ring the police chief and tell him to get those top cars down to maintenance at once. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, what about the Dodgem car in the middle? Oh, I should say... <laughs> I should, um... I should send that as well and I'll pick it up le... le, le. <laughs> uh, um, um... Did you enjoy your leaves, huh? <laughs> yes, thank you. Mind you, the weather could have been... Will long. you two be quiet, please? Tell them to get rid of that confounded thing. I don't care where they dump it, but get rid of it. Aye, aye, sir. And now, gentlemen, you'd better get aboard Troutbridge. She's in number two dry dock. Aye, aye, sir. And please, please try not to start another strike. We've only just settled the last one. Well, we won't, sir, but CPO Pert we may when he hears the news. No. It's a car up! That's what it's easy 
a whacking great monumental carver. That's what it did. Who did it? Who did it? That's what I want to know. All right, who did it? That's what I want to know. Who did it? <laughs> who did it? Kirk, he requires the gent's guts for darkness. <laughs> What's more, I'll have his kneecaps for inkwells. <laughs> You don't look at me. I'll be. Ah! <laughs> I wasn't going to look at you, Ginger. You look like Whistler's mother at the best of times. <laughs> but with an hangover and flu, you look like his great grandfather. <laughs> I fell off rolled into a puddle. <laughs> that wasn't a puddle, you clown. You dunked yourself in the dock. Oh, I thought it was a bit deep for a puddle. <laughs> well, it wasn't deep enough. Nani. Nani. Control, Pertwee, control. Who did it? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Who did it? Who did it? Nobody. I just felt like a swim. Ah. <laughs> Look, I wasn't talking about your freeze tile flounder and flap about. I mean, who prized Pertwee off the island? I don't know, but I'll lay six to four it was another Pertwee. It would have had to have been. Yeah, and the snag is, they're all suspect. Any one of them may have done, Johnsy. Natty little problem, innit? <laughs> yeah, all right, that's enough out of you, Titanit. <laughs> what? Aren't you, you ginger-headed gesundheit? <laughs> That's typical, isn't it? Never a word of comfort for the sick and ailing. Yeah, you... <laughs> Belt up. I had you. I can't. Well, force yourself. No. Don't you, Ginger. A man's entitled to an app any time he fancies it. What? Stung me. Stung me. Stung me. What do you think this shit is? An emergency ward tenement? <laughs> Blimey, that's Nunky. He's on the dock. <laughs> Still, it makes a change from being in the dock, doesn't it? <laughs> Come aboard, you old fool. I've got news for you. No, you haven't. <laughs> I've already heard it. Oh, yeah, perhaps he's the one who had us evicted, Chief. Ah, oh, hardly, Johnson, hardly. You seem to forget that Nunky and I have had a little deal concerning cool and solid fuel. <laughs> We've had that deal for years. We've kept his tug going on their lordship's kitchen nuts for years. Mm. <laughs> Don't I know it? Every winter we all got chill blains while your Uncle Ebenezer sailed the seven seas on our steam. All right, there you are then. It's not likely to be him, is it? No, but out of our hill, he won't get no kill. Although <laughs> <Well, no. Yeah. laughs> I did notice a few hundred tons stacked down the number five talk. <laughs> Very untidy, I thought it looked and all. <laughs> Very untidy, Johnson. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Chill brains all round again. <laughs> I'll never get rid of it. <laughs> Johnson, for Pete's sake, take your friend and his explodable hooter below. <laughs> take him below before he has us all down with the puny monocles. <laughs> oi, oi, Chief. Come along, Sneezy. Blow for fatso. I'll give you a drop of my mum mint. <laughs> Johnsy boy, what you doing in dry dock anyway? We'll have it a refit. Well, there's a liberty. Why didn't you fix it so Trackbridge had a refit in my shipyard? You what? You, you haven't got room to fit a new painter on a dinghy there. God, I'd have managed if the price was right, of course. Then why don't you do a refit on that flaming tug of yours? <laughs> don't be daft, I'm too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not my fault you can't afford you, is it? <laughs> no, it's your auntie's. A silly old faggot joined the union. So now I have to pay her time and half every time she scrubs me decks. Yeah, you're in the rough altogether, aren't you, Nucky? Why? Well, your coal is going to cost more now, you know. I'll have to give that so a little something before he'll hunt the pillage and stuff from number five, <laughs> Doc, won't I? What sort of something? Sixpence, I suppose. No. An air luminous watch. <laughs> He just lost one. Oh, 
has he? I'll bet that's the one you tried to flog Cousin Edbert half an hour ago. Well, right, news travels fast in our family, doesn't it? One bit didn't. Like what? Like which one of us it was that got you off the island. Yeah. Like another little bit. What bit? The bit about which one of us tipped Artie off to join the Union. You traitor! <laughs> I'll do it with you. I'll have my own back. You, you, you see if I don't. I'll ruin you. Curl just went up again. Two quid a ton it is now. <laughs> hey, you profit here. I'm glad I got you off the island. Ah, ah. So it was you. I knew it, right? This is war. Gloves off, lads, it's war. I'll have you. I'll get me own back on you, see if I don't. Oh, I'll see you don't, all right. Officer, call out the guard. Over there with the handcuffs. Yeah. Heard me, he's called a spy. Yeah. It's Matarari with a five o'clock shadow. <laughs> Run him in, lads. Run him in. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, this wardroom was never exactly the last word in luxury, but now we've lost our little bits of chintz and the photograph of Admiral Troutbridge, it looks rather like a condemned cabman's shelter. <laughs> yes, it's funny how you get used to things in time, sir. Well, we've got used to you. <laughs> Wonder how much longer they'll be on this refit. I hope they get a move on. No, I expect they will, sir. Can't take much longer now. Then one of their chaps will pop his head round the door and say... Um, Excuse me, sir, but I think we're in the muck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He may... What? We're up the creek with a Mr. Phillips, sir. Look, uh, nonsense. How can we be? We're in dry dock. I can't have hit anything. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't know about that, sir, but old Thunderguts is about to pay us a visit, sir, and he's, uh, he's his customary shade of puce. Law. <laughs> you mean he's on the dockside? Number one! No, sir. Aboard. An approaching downwind at a fine old turn of speed. <laughs> Number one! Where are you? In the cabinet's shelter. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, in, in here, sir. Ah, so there you are. Is there something ever so slightly amiss, sir? No, oh, no. Mr. Phillips, hmm? is this your suitcase? What? Oh, yes, so it is. Well, I call that jolly civil of you, sir, to carry it over for me. <laughs> I wondered what I'd done with it. Did you really? Yes. Where did you find it, sir? On the back seat of what's left of your car. Oh, of course. I didn't collect it when I found I parked with... Oh. <laughs> uh, permission to go ashore, sir? My dear old white-haired mother's been struck down with the twinging screws. And she's still stuck in the doorway of the... No. <laughs> Very delicate situation, sir, being stuck in the doorway of the... No, Jim. <laughs> and be quiet while Commander... Captain. Um, Captain Povey is talking. Captain Povey? <laughs> <laughs> a minute, I thought you said... Captain Povich. <laughs> Permission to buy myself out of the service. <laughs> I've got a dear old white mother stuck in the doorway. No! <laughs> I wish I was dead. <laughs> the wardroom, Trout Bridge, number one here. Hello, this is a fairy princess trapped in the TARDIS, the Demon King there. <laughs> yes, Heather, hang on. Uh, Commander Povich. Uh, Captain. Uh, Captain Povey, sir, it's your secretary. Uh, thank you. Hello, Commander Povey uh, speaking. Cap Captain. <laughs> thank you. Hello? The Admiral's been on the phone, sir, and he's hopping mad. The Admiral? Oh, no, what's happened? Well, he can't get out of his office, and it's his turn to go home early. <laughs> Can't get out of his office. Why not? Well, apparently there's an old motor car with no wings parked across the door, and he's trapped. Oh, good grief. He wants it moved at once, and he wants to know who is the steaming idiot who had it left there. No, no. There's something wrong, sir? No, oh, no. Just that Mr. Phillips' car is parked across the Admiral's door, and he can't get out, that's all. Oh, lummy. <laughs> you may well say, oh, lummy, Mr. Phillips. He wants to know who was the steaming idiot who left it there. Well, I didn't. <laughs> no, sir. In a manner of speaking, you did. 
What? I don't care where they dump it so long as they get rid of it. You said so. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Commander Bobby. <laughs> What am I going to do? This is awful. I, I'm ruined. Uh, not yet, son. It seems to me that there is one solution. Oh, what's that? Well, if you were unable to say for certain who the offending vehicle belonged to, I think it's quite possible we may not be able to remember a certain phone call you made to the police chief. <laughs> this is blackmail. I, I suppose it is. <laughs> Captain Purvey. My promotion, I... Oh, all right, I, I'll get ashore and sort it out. Uh, and you, you won't forget to have Mr. Phillips run about repaired by maintenance, will you, sir? Have it repaired by... Yeah, he, he, an, an unprovoked attack, it was, sir. An unprovoked... He was backed into by two stationary star cars. <laughs> as witness, as witness for the persecution, I shall be happy. Oh, to give all right, all right. Now, I must get ashore. You will, sir. I have a feeling you'll be lucky. If I didn't know better, I could swear we were afloat. Afloat, sir? Yeah. Yes, now that you mention it, sir, it does feel as if we, uh... As if we, uh... As if... Uh, oh. <laughs> Why, we are afloat. He's going green. Everybody on deck! Oh, this is ludicrous. You're in dry dock, but how could you be afloat? I know, sir, but... Um... Tell me, look, water. Water, sir. Look, look, gallons and gallons of it. We're a flute in a moot. <laughs> but good grief, the, the, the dock's filling. Well, who the heck opened the valve? <laughs> I told you I'll get me home back. <laughs> monkey, you perishing old fool. Bung the bung back in the old monkey. <laughs> Off our plates are off. We'll go down like a stone. Then the boat's legs. Can't please get his boots wet. <laughs> oh, here, somebody fetch the plumber. Here, we're all going down. We'll get Ginger's puny monocles. Everybody's going down. And me dear old mother's still stuck in these. That was Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Heather was Heather Chasen, Abel Seaman Goldstein was Tony Evans, and Lieutenant Commander Stanton was played by Ronnie Barker. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray. <laughs> Gardening is just the job for a fit man, particularly if you can afford a fit man to do the job. Now, personally, I just lend all my tools to my next-door neighbour and I never ask for them back. But, however, even on board Troutbridge, Abel Seaman Johnson has a very serious gardening problem. Now then, the point is, where's Abel Seaman Johnson going to get a dirty grape dollop of mud? <laughs> right in his eye, mate. <laughs> look, what are you nattering about, anyway? Mud. It's difficult stuff to get mud is, you know. Now, look, Johnson. I mean, when was the last time you saw a mud shop? Johnson, what are you talking about? There's a fortune for the first bloke who opens a shop full of mud. Look, I'll shove you under six foot of it in a minute. What do you want dirty great dollops of mud for, anyway? A face pack? <laughs> Certainly not. I'm gardening. Gardening? What, aboard ship? Yeah. I'm going to have a window box. <laughs> look, Johnson, ships don't have windows. They have portos. <laughs> you can't have a porto box. No, I don't want one. I'm going to grow indoor plants. My mum Min sent me a packet of seeds. Well, why didn't she send you the mud as well? <laughs> well? Because where she lives, there aren't any mud shops either. Look, John said. Uh, it's a serious national problem, you know, not having any mud shops. Look, will you be quiet about your muddy shops? <laughs> where are these flaming seeds of yours, anyway? They're not flaming seeds, they're flowering seeds. All right, uh, all right, all right. What sort are they? Well, they're the sort that needs mud, and you can't get mud because there aren't any mud shops. Oh, look, I told you before. <laughs> I told you before, I don't care about mud shops. If I hear another word about mud shops, I'll find a ton of it and dig a big hole and fill you in. 
I don't want a ton of it. I just want a dirty great dollop, so I... Oh, come! <laughs> now, come on, give us the packet of seeds. Here you are. Here you are. They're flowering um grummets. <laughs> They're flowering what? Um grummets. What the blistering prick does all flowering um grummets? <laughs> Well, they're the things that come up when you plant them seeds in mud, but you can't get the mud because there aren't any mud jars. Now, look, <laughs> look here, Johnson. I'll do you a disaster call in a minute, I swear it. They make jolly good soup, you know. What do? I mean, who do? Dad. <laughs> um, grummets. Haven't you ever had um, grummet soup? No, I don't think I... Here, wait a minute. Was that um grummet soup your mum min kept sloshing up when I was staying at your place? Yeah, it's one of my mum min's specialities. Good tack, innit? Yeah, it's tacky, all right. <laughs> Tastes like a lot of loose glue. <laughs> yeah, and after you've swallowed it, it, it sets like concrete. <laughs> oh, that's something else I never thought of. There aren't any concrete shops either, are there? <laughs> Who cares? Well, I do. There's something seriously wrong with the board of trade if you can't get a no, bit look, of concrete. There's something seriously wrong with Abel Seaman Johnson if you don't cork up. They make jolly good wine, too, you know. What, the board? A trade? No, no. Um Grummet, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you ought to try a vintage bottle of Chateau Um Grummet. It's a bit cloudy sometimes. Yeah, I can imagine. Be like drinking a flagon full of fluid fog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something else you can't get. The... Yeah, don't bother to tell me they're not in the <laughs> Well, there aren't any fog shops. If there were, I'd lose you in one, I swear. Now, look, shut up about your flaring Um Grummets or whatever they are. I've got troubles of my own. Oh, well, that's a novelty, I must say. Who you swindle this time, then? There's no need to be uncouth, Patty. You must know Uncle Ebenezer and I have, uh, have ever so slightly crossed swords. <laughs> <laughs> Pertwee versus Pertwee. That's going to be a fight to the death if you like. I don't like. We Pertwees believe in harmony in the home, we do. Harmony in the home. We pride ourselves that for centuries the Pertwees have been a shining, nay, glittering example of untroubled domestic bliss. The simple joy of a quiet family gathering round the old for crumpets. <laughs> yeah, and a yarn or two, perhaps, yeah. The honest fellowship and the shared delight of little pleasures, Johnson. Like the smell of new-mown um grummets in the summer's eve. Well, now we know, don't we? Now what? Either you're talking about some other family or you want to patch up the row because Nunky's winning. Yeah. Well, the little difference of opinion are beginning to build up a bit, I agree. You see, Johnson, I happen to know that Nunky got his tug on our purchase in 1903 and hasn't made a payment since. What? I suppose you happened to mention to the higher purchase company where they could find it, just by accident. Well, it did sort of slip out when I was in conversation with him, if that's so, yeah. Yeah. And when that bloke's called on Nunky, he was having a refit. What happened then? Happened? He had to up anchor a bit sharp, as of course. <laughs> now he's drifting about the ocean with no funnel for smoke. <laughs> Every time he ties up and comes ashore, people think he's a Kentucky minstrel. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you've been trying to flog him a banjo and all. It's not what I've been trying to flog him, Johnson. It's what he's done. He's had me barred from every pub for miles. What, well, don't go in one? Why not? He spread the word that I'm, of all things, a copper's knock. And now nobody will speak to me. So what a stalemate, isn't it? You can't go into a pub to flog our rum rations and he can't get back in the dock for his funnel. <laughs> No need to savour it, dimple dumpling. <laughs> Look, I've got to get Nunky Seaworthy again somehow. Well, why don't you just lend him some tools so that he can finish off his refit at sea, sort of running repairs like? We don't forget we're having a refit ourselves. There are spanners, wrenches and saws lying about all over the ship. Perhaps you could ask the dockyard chaps to lend you some. Lend? <laughs> Did you say lend? <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to take up their time asking them for things like that. We'll just sort of, sort of, tidy him up a bit. You mean you're going to knock them off? I'm not, you are. <laughs> Me? Yeah, you. Go on, fetch him, boy. Good dog. Where you go? No, thanks. I'm staying in my kennel. No, you're not. You're collecting those tools or chance he's going to be in the muck. Oh, that's something else, isn't it? What is? Muck. When was the last time you saw a shop that sold muck? <laughs> there aren't the shops... I don't it. know who sells it, but I know who makes it. Your mum min and her flaring um grummet soup. Now, come on, Johnson. Scarpet and tidy up all the tools you can carry. Come on. All at once, she sent me round a note. Mr. Phillips, this is my cabin, not the palais. Here's the very note, sir. This is what she wrote, sir. Um, Elvis. 
Can't get away to dance with you tonight. Thunder guts won't let me. <laughs> da, 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 da. Mr. Phillips. Yes, da. Uh, um, I mean, uh, yes, sir. If you don't stop your songs from a blonde beatnik, I'll give you a golden slip disc personally. Well, sir, I'm pretty cheesed off and chocker. So are we, with all at once she sent me round a note. Yeah. Well, sir, she did. She keeps on sending them round. Who does? Heather, ever since she's been old Povey's secretary, I haven't seen her because she's working. I mean, it's a bit much. Every time I ask Heather for a date, she tells me she can't make it because she has to work late at the office. Well, coming from a girl to a man, it's a good twist, I agree. Do you know how long I spent waiting for her and drinking hot froth in the snug snoggery coffee bar last night? Um, about three hours. Yes. Uh... How did you know, sir? Well, I spent three hours waiting and drinking flat beer in the fireman's bucket and bell. Here, I say, sir. That means we've been double dated. Well, hardly. She didn't turn up. Well, that's not the point, sir. I mean, after she'd agreed not to turn up for me, she shouldn't have agreed not to turn up for you somewhere else at the same time. <laughs> hmm? Well, she shouldn't have done, should she, sir? I mean, even if she didn't, don't you agree, sir? Well, I've no idea. I can't work it out anymore. <laughs> oh, that's a pity. Why? I can't either. <laughs> we could give her a ring, I suppose. Don't be ridiculous, sir. She can't be engaged to both of us. That would be bigamy. That would be very big of you, I must say. <laughs> Actually, I meant give her a ring on the phone. Oh, I see, sir. Well, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll just ring the Thunderguts office and ask if Heather's there today. Oh. I think I'll go and issue the rum ration to help me forget things. Mr. Phillips, when you issue the rum, it's the men who are supposed to have it, not you. Oh, I know that, sir, but when they dish it out, golly willikins, <laughs> those wonderful fumes. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean, but if you're issuing it today, keep your eyes open. What do you mean, sir? Well, make sure the ratings get it. Twice this week, I found about a dozen dockyard workers in the queue. <laughs> the sooner this refit is complete and we can get back to sea, the better. Come in. Morning, Governor. Chattersby is the name. Really? Any relation to ladies? Chattersby, I said. <laughs> I'm in charge of the gang working his ship. Well, that's funny. I thought I was. I mean the dockyard men doing this here refit. Oh, good. I, I didn't quite see you as the number one somehow. <laughs> I got a serious complaint, Governor. Well, don't speak to me. Go and see the M.O. I am referring to the fact that all our gear is being whipped from under our very hooters. Come again. We're being done, regular. And as soon as we put down a spanner on this ship, it vanishes. My men are going nuts. Well, that's... That's not much fun without a spanner, is it? <laughs> this is not a laughing matter, mate. Oh. Yes, well, it does seem a bit strange. I'll tell you something stranger, mate. Every time something else goes, either your chief petty officer or a fat geezer are a couple of yards away looking flipping angelic or something... Well, that proves nothing. I, I mean, uh, nothing. Well, it's probably sheer coincidence, mate. Oh, and I suppose it's sheer coincidence that a couple of days after we lost Sonic, he tries to flog us Sonic exactly the same for half price. Hmm, that does seem a little odd. Yes, he usually wants three quarters. <laughs> well, leave it with me, Mr. Chattersby, and I'll look into it. Right, Governor. But remember this. Sonic's got to be done about it. Oh, there's going to be trouble. Or Sonic. <laughs> That's right. Good morning. Good morning. I say, it hasn't taken the chief long to open up shop, has it, sir? No, but today is going to be early closing day. Where is he, do you know? Yes, sir, but it shouldn't be difficult to find him. He'll be a couple of yards away from the nearest unguarded spanner, looking flipping angelic. <laughs> or Sonic. <laughs> Yes, quite. Well, go and find him and tell him I appreciate his severe financial loss through leaving the island. Yes, sir. But he's to stop turning this ship into a free trading area at once. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Hello, squadron office. Cat. 
Captain Povey speaking. What? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Haven't you heard? <laughs> it's Captain Povey now. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're too kind, but it would sound well, wouldn't it? Hmm. Admiral Povey. <laughs> oh, never mind. For the moment, Captain Povey will do. <laughs> yeah, what was that? No, I am not taking a full-page advertisement in the Times to announce it. Goodbye! <laughs> Jealous lot. Come in. Oh, good morning, sir. Ah, oh. I must warn you, Ren Chasen, that we shall be working late this evening. Oh, that'll make a nice change, won't it, sir? There is no need for sarcasm. It's hardly my fault there's all this extra work to do now that I'm Captain Povey, is it? Oh, quite, sir. Must be a terrible responsibility of being an acting captain. What? Oh, uh, yes, 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 quite. The, um, the promotion will be confirmed shortly, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's bound to be. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh, bound to be, sir. And then perhaps we can stop working late every night. Yes, yes, well, well of course we can, once they've noticed it. <clears throat> Any messages this morning? Um, yes, sir. The Admiral will be visiting the dockyard, and amongst other things, he wants to see what progress has been made on refitting Trout Bridge. He would. When's he coming? Oh, by the end of next week, sir. Oh, well, the refit should be complete by then. It's bound to be. Now, oh, that ought to please him. Yes, sir. I mean, you'll be able to drop a little hint about getting your promotion confirmed, won't you? <laughs> yes, I shall. I shall do nothing of the sort. <laughs> Very idea. Sorry, sir. Mind you, if he should happen to bring up the subject, I, I could just mention how smoothly the refit has gone since I took him out of the squadron, couldn't I? Oh, I'm sure you will, sir. I mean, good, sir. Yeah. Just like clockwork. That's how it's been. Just like clockwork. <laughs> Come in. Morning, Governor. Chattersby's the name. Oh, in relation to Lady Chatters. Chattersby, I said. I'm in charge of the gang on Troop Bridge, and I thought you might like to know something. What? We're on strike. Whoops, the spring in the clockwork just went boing, 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 boing. <laughs> on strike, but which you can't, which you mustn't. We have. But, but, but why? Having spanners nicked is one thing, but you've had it now. But, but, but for pity's sake, what's happened? Someone's nicked our mobile crane. Oh, good. <laughs> Arnold went to drive it this morning, and there it was, gone. But this, this is ludicrous. Arnold's got the dead needle, Arnold has. You see, he'd signed for the flipping thing, and now they want to stop it out of his pay. <laughs> but if Arnold's got to pay for it, I shouldn't have thought he could afford to go on strike. He can't. But with no crane, how can Arnold work to pay for the crane he hasn't got, eh? <laughs> That's what we're striking about. No. Oh. Look here, you leave this to me. I'll get uh, Arnold another crane from somewhere. The refit on that ship has got to be completed. The Admiral's coming to see her. He's not, you know. He won't get past the pickets. You can't picket an Admiral. He's a non-union man, actually. Now, 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 let me sort this out. But, but in the meantime, for goodness sake, get the men back to work. All right. But I'll not get them back to work on number two, Doc. It can't be done. Why not? I've declared it black. Well, how about declaring it whiter than white again? You're joking. You must be. I can't play ducks and Sir Francis with men like that. <laughs> I should lose my authority, or Sonic. Yeah. Well, if you don't complete that refit, so shall I. Well, that's up to your shop steward, mate, not me. Oh, I'll tell you what I could do, though. What? Have Troop Bridge move to another dock. We could work on her then. Well, this is preposterous, absolutely preposterous. But it would have cost a fortune. Very likely. Now you know how Arnold feels about paying for that crane. <laughs> I, I can't. Oh, oh, very well. I'll have Troop Bridge. Down there, Troop Bridge. Move to number five, Doc. Will that suit you? Fair enough. I'll tell the lads we've reached a settlement. Oh, Sonic. <laughs> That's right. Morning. Right, Taffy, it stopped fermenting. Bung it in the bottle quick. Right. Mind you, we're both of equal rank, so why I should take orders from you is beyond me. Because you want a bottle of my umgrummit wine, and you won't get any if you don't give me hand with the brewing up. Now pour it in. You know, this reminds me of my Aunt Morpeth, this winemaking does, you know. Used to have treading parties in her bath, she did. <laughs> 
I didn't know Um Grummet grew in Wales. Ah, no, they do. She made her wine from leeks. Oh, but lovely smooth wine it was. But there was a nasty catch in it. Nasty catch? Yeah, you didn't find out what the catch was until the next morning, mind. <laughs> <laughs> then you knew, all right. <laughs> all right, you two. How's the brew up coming along, then? We're all bottled, Chief. Then you want to be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> Chance will be a fine thing. Slaving over a hot vat we've been all day. I don't know what you want all this umgrummet wine for, anyway. I'm going to play swaps with it, Johnson. The crew are going to get fat so's umgrummet wine instead of their rum ration. You see, and then when Nunky lifts the ban on Johnsy in the local pubs, Johnsy will be ready to do business as a rum earl sailor. <laughs> old sailor? When the crew finds out you whip their rum, sailor you may be, but old I do. <laughs> well, look, you, you, put, you put the rum essence in, didn't you? Yeah, but that's not the point. These are shop um grummets. They're not homegrown um grummets like my mum Min uses. All right, so what? Well, it's not the um grummet season. These um grummets have been forced under glass. They won't have the true um grummet flavour. Look, I don't care as long as that stuff is the true 90% proof, 100% synthetic rum flavour. You can't force an um grummet if he doesn't want to go. <laughs> they like to grow old gracefully. Yeah, very likely. But none of us are going to grow old at all if that stuff doesn't taste like rum. Well, don't look at me. I wouldn't drink it if you paid me. And knowing you, there's not much chance of that. <laughs> he hasn't even paid me for these um grummets yet. Ten pence a pound they are, you know. Well, it's all in a good cause, Johnson. All in a good cause. I might add that thanks to our borrowing the odd spanner or two and certain other little arrangements that I've made, Nunky's refit is now complete. Funnel and all. Funnel and all. <laughs> He's no longer being covered in smoke and coke. Pity, I liked it better when you two were at war. Ah, <laughs> well, hard luck. Now, all I need now is a volunteer to taste your own made um granite wine. We're in. Ship stores here, and there aren't any. There better be, Chief. Oh. <laughs> the Admiral and Captain Povey are aboard. Bring a bottle of rum up to my cabin, will you? The Admiral wants a tot. Rum for the Admiral, sir. I don't think we've got... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One eye ranking volunteer, boys. Oh, what'd you say? I say, uh, nothing, sir, nothing at all. Bottle of rum coming up at once, sir. Good, as soon as you can, Chief. Chief, you're not going to, surely. Flying in the face of disaster, that's what you're doing. All right, then pass me a bottle of that um grummet wine, sir, Pert, we can get airborne. But you can't do it, you can't give an admiral that stuff, it's hardly cold. Good. <laughs> It'll warm him as it goes down, then. <laughs> if, there's a, if there's a nasty catch in it like there is in my Aunt Morpheus, he'll warm you tomorrow. <laughs> Least ways, not tomorrow, the day after. He'll be busy until then. <laughs> no, no, you'll never get away with it. Not with um grummets that have been forced under glass, you won't. Here, Ch Chutsy. Well? Do you want a bet? <laughs> Well, Admiral, I must say, it's very nice to see you here again. Well, you can see I've been on the beer again. Well, that's a nice welcome for a chap, I must say. Nessa, Nessa, number one didn't say that at all, sir. Have some fun with a bat and ball. <laughs> all right, Sonny, what shall we play? Rounders or French cricket? Well, just as you like, sir. I don't really mind. Oh. <laughs> you know, they're getting worse. But which one? Both of them. Hello, who are you? The Commander Povey, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> Captain Povey, sir. Hey, Did you say Captain Povey? Yeah. Who on earth promoted you? Well, you did, sir. Well, that's just what I said. Who did? Good grief. <laughs> I said it was you, sir. Some chap in a boozer. <laughs> Can't be promoted by some odd bod over half a pint of slush, you know. These things are done officially. Oh, you'll get run in. Uh, the, uh, the way in waiter, sir. Well, one bottle of rum coming up, sir. Oh, well done, Chief. Uh, pour out some, will you? <laughs> pleasure, sir. <laughs> pleasure. Only two charmed and short, sir. <laughs> Delighted. <laughs> right away, sir. <laughs> Turn it, sir. Yeah, pour it out, sir. With the lacrimal titty, sir. <laughs> By all means. <laughs> sir... Hmm? What's all this service with a smile business? I mean, what's he, what's he been up to? That's precisely what I'm worrying about. Ah, uh, excuse me, your admiral ship, um, that's your tot. Eh? 
Well, if that's me lot, I'll have to make do with it, won't I? Collect your little noggins here, gently, sir. This way, for your drinks on a tray. <laughs> Who wants some rum for his tummy? <laughs> All right, Chief, we've served ourselves. Oh, well, down the hatch. Cheers. Uh, cheers, yes, uh, cheers, uh, cheers. Creeping, Jenny, what's this muck? It tastes like loose glue. <laughs> Wait until it sets. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I said it was the best I could get, sir. Well, if you've got any more of this muck, send it back to main stores for exchange, man. Oh, well, I... 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 I've got rather a lot, you know, sir. Well, I don't care. Tell them I said you were to change it. Shocking tack. Blasted stuff tastes like humdrummed wine. <laughs> Wicked muck. Now, you tell them to change it. Uh, change it, sir? Oh, a pleasure, sir. Yeah, only two chops, sir. Yeah, delighted. <laughs> yes, at once, sir. Yeah, right away, sir. <laughs> tell them, sir, change it, sir. With a lack of sir. Yeah, by all means. <laughs> No, Mr. Phillips, I don't know what's been going on, but I'm sure of one thing we'll never find out now. With CPO Pertry, sir, we never do. Well, I must be shoving off. Oh, uh, about my promotion, sir. Oh, I realize it's just a formality, but, well, uh, the confirmation of rank would be much appreciated. Your promotion? Well, don't talk to me about it. See this mate of yours in the boozer. It's his idea, not mine. Well, I'm off, you know. Uh, but the refit, sir, it's thanks to me. It's complete. I've worked late every day. Oh, that's all right. I know the way. Cheer up. It's sad, sad. It's complete because I... Um, I... Captain Povey, huh? our refit's not complete, you know. That's complete. But it must be. No, 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 sir, no, sir, it, is, it isn't. There's been a bike on a train. I, I mean, a, a, a crike in a train. No, 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 a strike over a crane. <laughs> strike? But I settled it. Well, that's why I had you, had you moved here to number five, Doc. Ah, oh, but this is number six, Doc, sir. We couldn't use number five. No, sir, there's a tatty old tug in it with no funnel. A tatty old tug with no funnel? Yes, sir, the chaps who were working on us have been working on that tug like mad for days. She's about ready to put sea again now, sir. But we haven't got in any tugs for refit. Oh, but you must have, sir. Who else could it belong? <laughs> Chief. Uh, well, if that's all, sir, I must be getting back to main store, sir. There's a, there's a chap there with a nasty attack of the ungrummet, sir. I mean, it's a... Chief. It, uh, well, well, Who please. does the tug belong to in number five, Doc? The tug. <laughs> tug, sir, in number five, Doc. Oh, well, <laughs> can't see I've noticed it. <laughs> Have a look through the porthole, then. <laughs> through the porthole, sir? Well, yeah, well, I'd rather not. Thanks all the same. I might catch a cold, you know. Oh, Go on, open it up. Aye, aye. Right. <laughs> what are you doing, Johnsy boy? Waving me goodbye? Yeah, I hope so. Get moving, Nunky, for Drake's sake. They've rumbled us. Who cares? I've got me fuddle on now. Ta da! <laughs> Cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon. Cough! 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 A mush full of sooty smoke. <laughs> <coughs> well, Sambo, any idea who that tug belongs to now? Wait till I get my hands on him at all. Wait till I get a boot him in his salt cake smokestack. I will alter your feet. What's going on? Am I to understand some civilian tug has had a refit by Admiralty without us knowing it? It's ludicrous. Oh, give me the glasses. I'll soon settle this. Chief Petty Officer Pertwee. Uh, well, if that's all, sir, I must be getting back to my store, sir. There's a chap caught there, sir, with a nasty attack of the young gravity, sir, and I want to get Chief back. Petty Officer Pertwee, what do you know about this tug? Tug? Tug, sir, me, sir. <laughs> what do I know about this tug? That tug, sir, I've never, I've never seen that tug before in all my empty parts. No, I say, never, 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 never. No. Never, never, never. No. You yeah. have? Eh? Then perhaps you would care to read her name on the star. Her name, sir? Yes, Chief. <laughs> it's very clear. It's just been painted by our workmen. Oh, what's it saying, sir? H.M.S. Pertwee. <laughs> H.M.S. 
Hey, Jimmy, it's perfect. Hey, Jimmy, it's a pure blind coming sergeant, sir. That, that, that tongue's had a name changed by Deepers. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know a thing, I, I swear, I don't know a thing about it. I was treading on grummets at the time, sir. Tidpins, a pound of their lovely. Stop me and try it. Can I get you a tongue for the wine? I tell you, that Ed Groon and the morning picked a me and Grum one. That was John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one. Commander Povey was played by Can Richard... Captain Co- Povey! I, I, I beg your pardon. Uh, Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott. Able Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, the Admiral was Tony Evans, Heather was Heather Chasen, and Sid Chattersby was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee. We're all a bit helpless when we meet the chap in authority. Going home last week, I had to stop my car at the lights, and before they turned green, a traffic warden booked me for parking. But, however, when the officers of HMS Troutbridge have to meet old Thunderguts, they're not only helpless, they're terrified. Well, gentlemen, there's no point in stopping out here. We've got to get into his office sometime. Uh, Couldn't we just wait here for a year or two, sir? (laughs) Until he's retired. Oh, it's a capital idea, old fruit, but Povey will never be retired, you know. Oh, no, they'll mothball him over. <laughs> mothball him, yes. Mm. Uh, you could be right, sir. So we may as well get this over. Yeah. Now then, who's going to knock on the door? I don't care, sir. <laughs> Bags, I'm the one that runs away. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, stop being a cowardly custard and knock on the door. Oh, very well, sir. Well, here it goes. Oh, bad luck, he's out. We'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> Come in! Oh, bother. Next time, Bags, I'm the one who runs away. <laughs> Good morning, Captain Povey. Good morning? Why, it's practically afternoon. You should have been here half an hour ago. Uh, we were. You were? Uh, then why the blazes didn't you knock before? Uh, we were waiting for you to go into mothballs. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, we, we thought you'd retired with your, um, uh, for the night, sir. Retired for the night? I haven't even had lunch yet. Oh, oh well, well, then don't let's stop you, old fruit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Can't keep a chap from his din din, can we? See you some other time. Lieutenant uh, Commander Stanton, will you stop trying to get out of that door like a greyhound out of trap six? I brought you all here to meet the new officers joining your ship. Heaven help him. New officers, sir? Well, which one of us has got the golden rocket? <clears throat> Unfortunately, none of you. As I've already informed you in my memo, he will be additional to your present compliment. I don't remember seeing a memo about... Mr. Phillips? Um, um, a half a moza. Um, I, 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 ju- I just remembered, Captain Povey did send me a mo uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I sent a, a memo, yes. A memo and a half a mo. Um, uh, one man and his me went to mo a memo. Um, and... Stop fighting it. We get the message. Yes, yeah, so did I, sir. I'd forgotten all about it. Uh, a new officer, eh? Does he, uh, does he fish at all? I have no idea, sir. He's an electronics waller. Oh, foreigner, eh? Foreigner, yeah. <laughs> No, sir. He's to supervise all our new electrical gear. What's the name? Uh, Lieutenant Bates, sir. I gather he, he, he can mend anything from the Aztec to a light bulb. Well, never mind about all that Aztec. Does he fish at all? Well, I think he's bound to, sir, with a name like Bates. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, yes. <laughs> Bates, fishing, yes, fishing. <laughs> I don't see that follows at all. <laughs> well, I suppose... No, uh... no, no, I mean, if a chap's name's Bicycle, it doesn't mean he can ride one, does it? Well, we don't know anybody called Bicycles, huh? Yes, we do, old teapot, this new electronics wallet. Sir, you... Yeah, he uh... rides a fish, you know, he rides a fish. No, no, that can't be right. Think again, head. Oh, ha! 
Lieutenant Fish rides a bicycle. That's it, I'm sure. Uh, you've got it the wrong way round, sir. You're saying bicycle for baits. Don't be ridiculous, old socks. You can't use bicycles for bait. Well, the fish had never reached the pedals. <laughs> well, if you've all quite fit... Oh, that'll be red chasing with Lieutenant Fish. That, that bite, that, that, that bait... Oh, come in. Now, gentlemen, I'd like you to meet to... Well, where is he? Well, if you mean Lieutenant Bates, sir, he got lost in transit. What? Well, I met him at the Unicorn Gate, sir, but somewhere between there and here, he vanished. Oh, good grief. You know, Mr. Phillips, I have a feeling we're going to like this chap. Yes, it does rather look as if he's our sort, doesn't it, sir? <laughs> it most certainly does. Good grief, it's, it's only a few hundred yards. He had an escort and he still gets himself lost. Oh, he's come to the right ship, all right. Oh, I'm sure Lieutenant Bates will have an explanation when he turns up, sir. Well, he's something well better have. Come in. Uh, excuse me, chaps. I can't imagine how it happened, but I'm rather lost. How's that for a perfect explanation? <laughs> this is Lieutenant Bates. So, I get. I'm looking for Captain Puppy. Any of you... <laughs> Any of you heard of the old um, codger at all? Puppy? Uh, yes, the name does seem to strike a bell. Yes, with a resounding clangor. <laughs> I hate to tell you, Lieutenant, but this is Captain Puppy. Oh, crikey. I am a um, Juggins, aren't I? <laughs> <clears throat> this certainly looks like it. Now then, apart from you all meeting Bates, I have some news for you. Your refit is now complete. Lieutenant Bates has finally arrived, so tomorrow morning you'll start acceptance trials. Acceptance trials? Well, it's hardly necessary, isn't it, sir? I mean, we like him. He's a grand chap. Yeah. No, no, not a Bates of trunk, me, you idiot. Oh, Leslie's boobed again. <laughs> you'll put to sea at 0930 tomorrow morning, is that understood? Uh, put to sea, eh? Oh, that's capital, eh? Make it earlier, if you like. Best time of the day to catch the big fellas, you know, Dawnies. They pop up to the surface to see who's left the light on, you know. Lieutenant Commander Stanton, this is not a fishing trip. You've got to accept delivery of the ship from the dockyard contractors. Have I? Well, I'm not paying for it, and that's flat. <laughs> Clear out the lot of you, for goodness sake. And don't forget, you're put to sea at 0930 tomorrow morning. Aye, aye, sir. You will be there to wave us goodbye, won't you? No! Oh! Um, Mr. Phillips, uh, 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 just a minute. I think something wants to pass. Uh, no. Uh, no, they don't, sir. It's us. Hmm? You've got your elbow on the U-tass. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, oh, so I had. I was hoping they would have moved that switch during the refit. So were we, Mr. Phillips. The way you keep leaning on it makes it sound like a floating brass band. Oh, what a wonderful idea, sir. If only we could get a tune on it, we could actually... Uh, Mr. 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 Phillips, uh, uh, the, the, the dockyard walls... Yeah? You're forgetting your navigation or someone. Oh, oh, lummy, yeah, yes. Uh, 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 wait, 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 wait a sec. I, I, I can't remember. Um, uh, 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 stand still for a bit. Stand still for um, a bit. Uh, no, no. Um, um, and uh, 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 left, 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 left. Oh, left, yeah, left, 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 left. Yes, yes, that's it. What comes next? Left, left, hang, hang, admit, admit, pull. Hurry up, sir, for Drake's sake. I'll get it, Chief. I, I'll get it. Don't, don't, don't tell me. It's on the tip of my... Um, on the tip of your... Uh, you know, my... Um, oh, no, uh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, 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 Chief. Yes, Chief. Sir. Uh, yes. <laughs> Come on. Left hand down a bit. <laughs> Left hand down a bit in the nick of time, at least, sir. Bridge number one here. Starboard lookout here, sir. And if we're going to sail that close to the arbor wall again, I want to be port lookout, sir. <laughs> All right, Goldstein, that'll do. Oh, you certainly will, sir. We were so close that time, Portsmouth Council practically had me listed as a ratepayer. <laughs> really? I wonder what the rating value of a rating is. <laughs> well, if it's all the same to Mr. Phillips, sir, I don't wish to find out. I don't happen to have a sense of humor. These days, I don't mind laughing my head off, but I don't want it bashed off. Goldstein, hello. Uh, uh, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Phillips, what? Uh, 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 what's your navigation all What? Navigation all What's the matter What? Well, look, look if, I, if I don't take the left hand down a bit, off a bit for a bit, we'll be going round and round a bit, a bit for a bit. <laughs> oh, lovely. So, so we shall. Um, uh, 
Straighten her up, Chief. Straighten her up a bit, it is, sir. That's better. With all due respect, sir, no, it's not. You're never satisfied, are you, Chief? What's the matter now? Well, we're heading straight for the other bank this time, sir. What? Oh, lummy. Uh, uh, right, right. Right, uh, right, um, right. Um, uh, no, right, no, no, right, no, left. Right, no, 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 left. Left, left, left. Uh, uh, left, uh, left, left. No, no, scrub left, that. Scrub, no, no, scrub that. Uh, yeah. uh, back a bit sideways. Back a bit, back a bit sideways. Aye? <laughs> no, 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 uh, no. Yes, no, yes. Yes. Ah. Yes. Right hand down the Teensy weensy bit. Right hand down a teensy weensy bit. It is at long last, sir. Bridge number one here. Oh, look out here, sir. If we're going to sail that close to the harbour wall again, I want to be the starboard lookout. <laughs> Relax, Ginger. Everything's under control again now. With all due respect, sir, at the risk of being monotononotical, sir. No, it's not. Don't be ridiculous, Chief. It must be. We're nowhere near either side now. Yeah, agreed, sir. But we're facing the way we came. You've turned us all <laughs> round. <sir>. Oh. <laughs> well, in no sense of being out too long, first time, is there? Yes, quite. But a round trip of less than five minutes is just a little over-cautious, don't you think? Yes, possibly, sir. But I, I, I don't want to get the, um, the engines overheated. Yeah, well, I know something that's getting overheated, and that's Captain Povey, sir. Look, he's doing a little dance on the dockyard wall. <laughs> I say, so he is. Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Tum. Humpty Dum Tum. Humpty Tum. -tum. Uh, he's got no sense of rhythm, has he? <laughs> Mr. Phillips, never mind the slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. Let's get out to sea quick, quick, fast. Yeah, and by the look of him, I doubt if this one's an excuse me, sir. <laughs> yes, perhaps you're right. Uh, whoa, back right round and, uh, gee up, chief. Whoa, right back round and, oh, stone me sideways. <laughs> no, not sideways, right round. Yeah. Soon have us out to sea now, sir. <laughs> Come in. Um, your coffee, sir. Thank you. I hope it's strong. I need it. Fourteen times they left the dockyard. And fourteen times they were back again ten years later. Oh, dear. Well, perhaps we should have had Mr. Phillips refitted instead of Troutbridge. Oh, don't mention that addled brain moron to me. Oh, don't be too hard on him, sir. He does try. Yeah, that's the trouble. If only he didn't, he'd save Admiralty a fortune. Oh, that reminds me, sir. The Admiral wants you to telephone him. Oh, no. Oh, as if I hadn't suffered enough for one day. What does he want this time? I don't know, sir, but um, cheer up. It might be to confirm your promotion. Oh. Oh, well, yes. Yes, because I, I, I suppose it might be. I, I hadn't thought of that. Oh, come now, sir. You must have done. Yes, certainly not. Well, well, get him at once. I, I mean, we mustn't keep the Admiral waiting, must we? Um, you told him I was out on the job, I hope. Well, um, sort of. Sort of. Ren Chasen, what did you tell him? Well, I said that as far as I could see, you were practicing the hornpipe on the dockyard wall. <laughs> you told him what? <laughs> Captain Povey's office. Oh, this is the Admiral. Is that you, Povey? No, sir. You're speaking to Captain Povey's secretary. Speak to your secretary? Certainly not. I want to talk to you. No, sir. I said... Cold in your nose and head? Oh, thought so. Your voice is all squeaky. Well, fair enough. Put your secretary on, then. It's the Admiral, sir. Um, um, hello, sir. Captain Povey here. I, I was about to get through. Was that Povey's wet through? <laughs> Serves him right for dancing hornpipes on the dockyard wall. <laughs> Well in, I suppose. I didn't. I was... Well, that's how you got that cold in the head, I'll bet. I haven't got a cold, sir. It's... Yes, he is a bit old for it. Yeah. Here, I say, your voice is jolly deep for a wren, isn't it? You sure you're Povey's secretary? No, sir, I'm not. Well, you'd better find out. Either you are his secretary or you're not. I'm not. Oh, lucky girl. <laughs> so, give the old fool a message for me, will you? It's urgent. Urgent, sir? No, urgent. Oh. Look, we're handing over a frigate to the Patani Land Navy this afternoon. She'll be known as the Popperdom. And she's to be attached to Povey's squadron for training. Training, sir? But, but, but who by? We've only got... Trout Bridge, of course. Yeah, I might have known. It'll be a disaster. Just what they've asked for. Splendid. Oh, there's, uh, there's one other thing. Uh, there's to be a handing over ceremony this afternoon 
So after that, I suggest we have cocktails aboard Trout Oh, no. Couldn't we have them aboard the Patani Land frigate, sir? What? Not likely. Those chaps concoct the most ghastly home brew. They make it out of humgrummits, you know. Shocking tack. Last time I tasted the stuff, I never knew a thing for 24 hours. And when I came to, I was driving a tram. <laughs> Good grief. Well, that's all then. Tell Povey I hope his cold clears up. But, sir, but, sir, this is Captain Povey. I, I, I wanted to ask you about having my promotion confirmed. I, I realize it's only a formality, oh, but... Oh, it's you again, Povey. Glad you got your voice back, Povey. You want to cut out hornpipes in future? <laughs> Stick to the old-fashioned walls. Goodbye. <laughs> There was ten green bottles hanging on the wall. Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. Johnson. And if one green bottle should accidentally fall. Johnson. Abel Seaman Johnson's gonna drink it all. <laughs> all right, all right. Belt up, you giggling jiggly. <laughs> what are you doing anyway? <laughs> I'm getting things ready for this cocktail party for the Patani Landers, of course. I'm making them a punch out of my mum Min's umgrummit wine. Umgrummit <laughs> wine? Look, you serve that stuff and Abel Seaman Johnson will be hanging on the wall. No, I won't. It's a local delicacy in Patani Land, that is. It'll make them feel at home. Yeah, if they drink that muck, they will be at home. <laughs> They'll all start driving there in trams. If they are, I know we'll be collecting the money for all affairs. Yeah. And when I come to you, I'll punch you a fortnightly one. You do, and I'll tell you where to get off. <laughs> all right, all right. Back. Get back in your cage, you treacherous brute. Go on. Bite in the hand that clouts you, would you? As if I hadn't got enough on my plate. What's gone wrong now, then? Something serious, I hope. Yeah, it's serious, all right. Yeah. This perishing party on board this afternoon happens to coincide with... Certain arrangements I've made with a, with a certain relative of mine. Well, why didn't you ring him up and cancel them, whatever they are? Uh, you're joking, of course. I've already paid him. And as you well know, barrel body, Pertwees don't give no refunds. First time I knew a Pertwee to pay in advance. Ah, uh, true. But when a Pertwee is working for a Pertwee, one of them has to give in. Eventually. <laughs> well, what was it all about this time, then? Ah, well, it was a sort of little... Little light removal work, Johnson. Oh, wow. Yeah, with a, with a fleet air arm helicopter. <laughs> I knew it. As soon as I saw that helicopter landing platform they fitted on our star, I knew it wouldn't be long before you started making a blooming fortune out of it. No. <laughs> now, this particular trip is freight only. Crates and crates of freight, mate. <laughs> smuggle. No, they're not smuggle. They're not. The contents of these crates... Happens to be the personal and private property of Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, what got left behind on the island because we never went back there after Lee. Uh, you mean it's all that gear you whipped out of the stores over there? Gear I whipped? Yeah, certainly not. I told you, they're, they're all my personal property. You know, all the little, little knick-knacks a sailor man collects whilst you're serving his country in Foregan parts, you know. Articles of great sentimental value. Such as what? Six dozen blankets, a grocer two boots. <laughs> so, so that's where they all went, was it? I should have known when you had me up in front of the captain for losing them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had lost them, hadn't you? <laughs> yeah. I thought you were dealt with very lightly, myself. Yeah, considering the amount of gear you whipped, I probably was. <laughs> right, well, I, I should hate you to have suffered in vain. So I'm going to let you give me an hand seeing that the gear arrives back safely. Well, that's jolly big of you, I must say. Ah, well, always willing to extend an helping hand to one who's fallen by the wayside, Johnson. Known criminal and friend. Yeah. <laughs> Trouble is, that helping hand's got a lot of light fingers on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones, that's so. But harsh words will get you a punch up the Utah. <laughs> Well, what have I got to do, then? Ah, that's better. Now, then, 
I want you to hang around that chopper landing platform all the afternoon, you see? Yeah. yeah. And the moment my relative lands and unloads the crates, yeah. whip them below through one of the hatches. How many of them are there then? Ooh, I only about twelve. Oh, well, that's all right. I thought it was going to be about a dozen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> old Thunder Guts will never see me just to. Good morning. Hey, come back here. Come here. Wiggle middle. I knew it. I'm going to get done. Fatso's going to be bunged in the rattle again. I'm not doing it. Well, you better, mate, or you'll be in the rattle for sure. How do you make that out? Then? I took the precaution of having all the crates labelled and addressed to you. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you're rotten. You're rotten, you are. You're rotten as rotter than ever rotted, you are. Yeah. Well, you stand by your hatches, Fatso. It's nearly dumping time for dimple dumplings. So come on, off you go laughing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do get out of my way, some of you. I'm slopping me wallop all over me gold braid. It'll rust, you see, it'll rust. Well, Mr. Phillips, the party seems to be going all right. <laughs> Rather, sir. <so. laughs> and so am I. <laughs> In fact, I've practically gone, sir. Well, I warned you not to go near that punch. I know, sir. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> it's absolutely marvellous. I... Oh, lovely stuff, Dolly. Nanny, who wants a sardine on a tatty bit of toast? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this way, for little niceties, you can nibble. I'll eat... Who would have an assaulted nut thing? Here they are for a dollop of dates. Come on. <laughs> Chief. Oh, sir. I said offer the refreshments, not do the commercials. <laughs> Even if most of these shirts do come from Shining White Hall. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, too. Aye, aye, sir, but I've got to shift these stuff somehow, sir. Why? Well, a certain relative of mine is doing the catering, sir, and what don't get eaten still gets paid for. By me. You see? Ollie, do that. Who'd have a little jelly in a jiffy? Come along, there. <laughs> Mr. Phillips. Mm hmm? Oh, jolly nice of you, sir. I have some more of that parvis munch. Uh, uh, some munchless parvis, sir. Mm, same again. Please. You won't. Get moving. Mrs. Povey's circulating again. Oh, how nasty. After you, sir. Henry! Henry, where are you? Come in, my love. Oh, good boy. Now introduce me to your little foreign friends. Foreign friends? Oh, oh you mean the officers of the Patani Land Navy. Oh, certainly, my love. Um, excuse me, gentlemen. I, I'd like you to meet my wife. Oh, indeed, this truly fine and magnificent shake hands with a large and resplendent lady in the old flowering Tetver. <laughs> Is a dishonor, my fine and magnificent friend, and I have looked forward to with an eager anticipate, as he will tell you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, yes, this will most certainly be a truly fine old how-to-do. Oh. Furthermore, my lady captain, my truly fine and magnificent friend and I would like you to understand how absolutely and completely charming we are to make your astounding acquaintance. <laughs> how-do, how-do, and one more, how-do. <laughs> well, I'm... Gracious. Oh, a thousand pardons from my truly fine and magnificent friend myself for meeting your splendid and resounding milady captain title. I shall. Oh, gracious. How do, how do your good gracious from me also? Hurrah, hurrah. And one more. Hurrah. hurrah. <laughs> and long live Mr. Glasson. <laughs> and his old bag. Oh. Gentlemen, that, that's not quite right. Mm -hmm. My wife is not called a good gracious milady captain. Mm -hmm. She's usually just called a... Henry. <laughs> yes, my love. Careful. Or I won't let you play with your little boat in the bath tonight. <laughs> I, I, I was only going to... to, to, to... What on earth? I mean, sketch your stuff, Dolly. Who wants a crisp to come out journey? Pull me! Pull me, old fool! What's that din? I can't hear myself drink. I have no idea, sir. It sounds like a helicopter landing. I don't care who you copped on the landing. What's that noise? I'll look into it at once, sir. 
Uh, no, no uh, I, I wouldn't, sir. No, no, you, you, you'll miss me stuffed olives, sir. Oh, yes. And if you don't like them, sir, yeah, how about a load of nuts from Mrs. P? What about that? Don't be ridiculous, Perkby. What's going on on deck? On, on deck, sir? <laughs> on deck? <laughs> hey, uh, nothing, nothing, sir. Oh, no, uh, nothing at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're all down here, sir. Yes, we're having our lovely stuffed olives, damn it. Excuse me, from you. No one on deck, eh? Oh, excuse me, sir. It's just one of my underlings doing a little tidying up, sir. I'll just have a word with him. Shot saying. Hello. Good boy. <laughs> Alley up with the chopper and scarper. But I haven't finished unloading yet, Chief. Oh, yes, you have. Oh, no, he hasn't, Chief. Oh, yes, he has. Old Thunderguts is on his course, <laughs> <laughs> Don't creep up on me like that, sir. Caught you at last, eh? Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see you wriggle out of this. I hope you will, sir. I'm certainly doing my best. And the old mill boy, the Pangrenelli Tangle, I used to hold. There you are, Povey. Wonderful party. My word, that umgrummed punch is powerful, Muck. Well, I'm off. Off, sir? Well, I'll just deal I'm with this. I'm going by tram, you know. Can I give you a lift? <laughs> Wonderful sport. Get those old brass handles whizzing round bags of fun. Tram? Oh, no. I I, I, I knew we shouldn't have had humgrummed wine in the punch. Oh, I'm in. I've got it. Gee, quite cheap. But, sir, your promotion, sir. You're forgetting, sir. The little surprise that you asked me to lay on for his admiralship, sir. Surprise? I asked you. What on earth? You... The chopper, sir. Chop, chop. The chopper, eh? Get, get an helicopter so the admiral can have a go at that instead of a tram, you said, sir. For sir, I say, cracking good wheeze. Well done, Povey. This wax tram driving hollow. <laughs> but I, I, I... Oh, come I, along, then. Up the daisy we go. We'll chat about that confirmation of your promotion up there, shall we? Hey, oh, no, certainly, sir. Yes, yes, by all means, sir. Holy bolt, everybody up. Chief, what on earth are you up to now? I'm about to pipe the Admiral aloft, sir. They're going tatars in the cumulus. <laughs> what? Hold very tight, please. Dipping up we go, pilot. No, 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 put me down. I want to get off. Well, I suppose that's one way of making sure he's a high-ranking officer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too money medical, sir. Yes. Yes. Chief, <laughs> yes, what's in all these crates? <laughs> crates? Crates? Crates, Chief. They all seem to be addressed to Abel Seaman Johnson. Oh, <laughs> So they are, sir. <laughs> I'll have a word with him, sir. He's around here somewhere. I'll just... That's so. I'll just have a word. That's so. Where are I? Where are I? It's funny. I like my genetics. All right, right up. Another one right behind. There's an old man. I hope he doesn't keep that up too long. Yeah, and I know someone else who hopes so as well, sir. Look who's hanging on underneath. <laughs> here he comes. I haven't paid me fair, all we are. Oh, you're rotten, all of you. Absolutely ringing rotten. Put me down. I want to go on top That was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer. Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Heather was Heather Chasen, the Admiral was Tanyal Evans, and the two Patani landers were played by Ronnie Barker and Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips.
few of us can resist a slot machine. Well, the only thing I ever get out of them is a couple of tatty sweets the sun's got at, or a weight card that says I'm three stone six and should stop being aggressive. But it's the post office who supplied the slot machine for stamps just outside the squadron office that's got Abel Seaman Johnson beaten. There go, you brute. Give me back me pennies. <laughs> Come on, cough up. Give us me stamp. I know you're in there, Threepney. <laughs> Come out and fight like a man. Oh, wow. Oh, I bust me fist now. Oh, me fist. Well, well, well. So, which is an old fat so doing his little dance. <laughs> well, I burnt me fist clobbering that blooming stamp machine. It's eating Abel Seaman Johnson's pennies. Johnson, I'm ashamed of you. If you mean I'm supposed to let you put the stamps on me letters and post them, I'm not doing it. Why not? Well, because every time I do, my mum min has to pay sixpence the other end. Because there's no stamps. <laughs> <chance. laughs> well, it's hardly my fault the GPO use inferior glue, is it? <laughs> oh, my name is Camel. Or something. The stamps I buy from you don't come off. They never go on. Oh, yes, they do, in a sort of roundabout way. How? How? Well, after I've copped your threatens, I write OHMS on the envelope and bang it in Heather's post tray. <laughs> well, you're not posting this letter, see? It's Fatso's entry for a newspaper competition, and Fatso's going to win it and all. Go on. What's our prize going to be, then? Our prize is going to be mine for a start. <laughs> As a choice, you see, you can either have a boat or a knitting machine. Oh, well, that's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. I'll have the boat and you can have the knitting machine. <laughs> that's not what I meant. You can only have one prize, so you have to choose, you see. Good, I've chosen. We'll go 50-50. I'll have the boat and you can launch it. Yeah, you're rotten, you are. That's what you are, a rotten old rotter who's absolutely stinking rotten. <laughs> it's all right. Don't argue, you grumbling gasometer. Come on, give us the letter or I'll miss the next collection from Heather's post train. Yeah. Come in. Hello, Heather. Well, well, well. Heather. Oh, I say, you must have had good news, eh? <laughs> oh, you look real radiant, you do, Heather. Oh, yes. Oh, so fresh you look, Heather. Just like a dainty little spring flower, you look, Heather. <laughs> a little ray of sunshine shining on us all. Whatever it is you want to scrounge, no. <laughs> no? No. Oh. And while you're about it, there's something else. Oh, what's that? You can take that letter out of my post tray. It's not going OHMS. But it's official, Heather. Oh, really? I didn't know their lordships were so hard up for ships they had to enter the Daily World Winner Boat competition. I... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, well, you know, well, it's just a... It's just a small attempt by Abel Seaman Johnson and myself as humble sailors serving the flank to help the old mother country to save a bomb or two on naval estimates. I mean, if we can win and can hand it over to the land we love so well, we shall ask for recognition. Just... The money for it. Yes. No. <laughs> Good morning, number one. Stun me. It's thundercats. Hello, Chief William Pertwee. What are you doing here? Yes, Chief. I thought you were aboard Troutbridge. Yeah, I thought you were, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you are here, you may as well hear the news. You may remember Sir Willoughby Todd Hunter Brown, the ex-governor of Potaniland. Yes, well, he's just been appointed governor of Fisker Island. Oh, I'm delighted to hear the lad's working again, sir. <laughs> yeah, but if, uh, that's all, I'll be just toddling off. It's that, not all by a long way, Chief. No, I was afraid it wouldn't be. Troutbridge is to take Sir Willoughby and his wife out to Fisker Island immediately. They'll go aboard at 09.30 tomorrow morning, so you'll be sailing about 11. Well, I'm sure the crew will be delighted to hear it, sir. None more than much talk. Oh, I might sit down. Oh, it's my leg. Oh, I've got him. Oh, 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 I've got him again. Got him? Got what? A nasty attack of the twinging screws. <laughs> no, don't, don't bother with the ambulance, sir. I'll limp to sick bay on me tops. Oh, the anagony of it. <laughs> yes, and I'd say that for the twinging screws, a long sea voyage is just the thing, wouldn't you, Captain Bowie? No, 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 you wouldn't, sir. No, it's, it's the salt air, see. 
When you've got the twinging screws, it plays other can old Harry with your left hand. All the dash and pebble. <laughs> That's it exactly, son. Very painful it is in all. Now, 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 stop this nonsense at once, Chief, and get aboard. Come on, Amelia. As governor, I'm supposed to meet the officers in the wardroom, and we've been at sea for hours now. I'm just coming, Willie. I was just making sure that all my suitcases were the right way up. I don't want any of them to leak. <laughs> leak? Suitcases can't leak? Oh, yes, they can. If they're as full of bottles as mine are, Willie. Oh, do hurry up. Come in. Oh, excuse me, sir. The captain sends his Todd Hunter Brown, so will you and Lady Wardroom join him in the compliments? <laughs> Come again? Oh, I'd rather not, sir. <laughs> I think that's just about the nearest I'll ever get. I know what he means, Willie. I have exactly the same little difficulty my thumb self times. <laughs> oh, well, come on, then. Lead the way. I right, certainly, sir. The, the wardroom's just down... Um, uh, no, wait a minute. No, I think it's back at... Um, uh, no, it must be a long, um... <laughs> you know, this is so embarrassing. You, you didn't happen to notice which way I came, did you? <laughs> no. Oh, tell you what, is there a bar in the wardroom? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, good show. We'll follow the wife. Off you go, dear. All right. Here we go. This way. Turn left. Left again, through here, mind your head, there we are, wardroom. Now, mine's large gin. <laughs> Never fail, Slummy. Sort of radar. <laughs> After you, Sam. Oh, welcome aboard, madam. Nice to have you with us, sir. May I introduce our captain, Lieutenant Commander Staunton? Charmed. Todd Hunter Brownie? Any relation to Willoughby Todd Hunter Brown? <laughs> I am Willoughby Todd Hunter Brown, Captain. Are you really... My word, yes, I can see the family likeness now. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. How is he, then? Who's who? Captain Willoughby Todd Under Brown. He must be an army man, is he? Well, oh, I've no idea. No. Perhaps you'd like to ask the wife. Oh. Amelia, dear, the captain wants to ask you. I was wondering when somebody was going to. But I'll have a tiny snortful of whatever's going. Uh, excuse me, Amelia, dear. Sir, I don't think you've met our new electronics officer, uh, Lieutenant Bates. Well, how do you do? Well, to tell the truth, sir, I'm rather in the pink. <laughs> been having an absolute ball in the old wireless room. I've been having a bit of fun down there, sorting out the old humdrummit switch. Some clot had put it wrong. The too near the floggle toggle. <laughs> is, is, is that serious? Oh, crikey, yes. It meant we were getting far too much hum and not enough drummit. <laughs> Mr. Phillips. Uh, yes, sir. I just noticed something and it's bothering me. Oh, we'll take him off, sir. <laughs> uh, uh, well, what, what was that exactly, sir? Hmm? Well, the captain's here. I'm here. You're here. And Lieutenant Bates is here. Rather, sir. We're all here. <laughs> yes, quite. So who the blazes is on the bridge? Well, sir, there'll be the chief and, um, and, uh... Oh, lummy. <laughs> he must be up there on his Todd Hunter. I, 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 mean, I mean, he's browned off. Uh, 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 oh, I'm glad I'm not duty officer. Mr. Phillips, look at the sheet. You are. Well, that's what I mean, sir. Whoever the clot is will be for it. And, uh... I think I'll just go up on the bridge and get some out. I should, Mr. Phillips. The chief must be feeling a bit lonely up there. Although, as far as navigation is concerned, I doubt if he's ever had it so good. <laughs> Left hand down a bit, Johnson. Left hand down a bit it is, Chief. Cool. I don't know, this is rich, this is. All the officers having a nosh up in the wardroom. We're left slaving over a hot helm. <laughs> yeah. They're a rotten lot of rottens being rotten, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Just as well you turned up. Would all have been up here on me Jack Jones. And tearing round like a blue-based baboon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Not at all. Now you're here, I've got a blue-based baboon to tear round for me. <laughs> that does it. You're not even going to have a ride in me boat when I win it now. Captain Abel Seaman Johnson won't have you aboard, so there. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. 
Oh, here, when did the Daily World announce the winner, then? Oh, any day now. I've asked Heather to let us know. Has a good lad. Yeah. I, I presume you uh, you told them that you wanted the boat and not the knitting machine. Oh, yeah. What? I didn't know I meant to. Oh, you bungling great potty porpoise. <laughs> You're going to look a right Charlie, aren't you, sitting in the sea going, knit one per one. <laughs> Uh, I'll see when Ginger's on duty in the WT room and get him to make a signal to Heather. Here, isn't that a bit dangerous? Chief, supposing old Thunderguts finds out. Ah, uh, well, that's a risk we've got to take, Johnson. Yeah. We've got to make sure we get possession of the boat somehow. What was that, Chief? Hmm? Oh, 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 there you are, sir. Uh, uh, no, nothing, see, nothing at all. Oh, well, then, um, sorry I'm late. Left hand down a bit, steady at that. Right hand up a bit, back a bit, up at the top of back a bit. Over a bit sideways, hold it there, left hand down again. Whoa! And full of head bows. Stone me, Mr. Phillips. What are, you, what are you trying to do, a nautical char char char? Oh, no, Chief. Just trying to catch up, up, up. <laughs> With due respect, sir, some of us have been on duty a long time, some of us has. Well, some of us have been having a booze out without the thought, but some of us who haven't. So some of us can hardly be surprised if the other some of us has got the dead needle with some of us. <laughs> can some of us? <laughs> some of us wouldn't know because some of us haven't the foggiest what some of us are talking about. <laughs> well, some of us will find out. Sometime. <laughs> Some of us would rather not. <laughs> do you care for another pinkers, Governor? Oh, why not? Ah, now, excuse me, sir. But do you mind if I join you? Uh, one moment, Mr. Phillips, before you make yourself cosy in the wardroom. Are you duty officer today? Mm hmm? Uh, no. Well, who's on the bridge? Uh, the captain, sir. Oh, that's all right, then. I don't want to risk leaving the chief up there alone again. Yes, quite, sir. Ever since last Monday, I've had a feeling I've been sent to Coventry. Yes, he has been a bit bolshy, hasn't he? Mm, he has indeed. Every time I ask him to do something, he reminds me that some of us always do all the work for some of us, while the other some of us don't lift a flipping finger to do some of us his share. <laughs> I didn't like to say anything, but we'd noticed some of the crew were a bit uppity, hadn't we, Amelia? <clears throat> Excuse me, sir, I don't like to interrupt you, sir, but it's urgent, sir. Yes, what's it, sir? I've been on duty in the communication room, sir, and there are a couple of signals I think you ought to know about. Well, why haven't I had them before? They concern CPO Pertwee, sir, and they're a bit odd. Mm, so is he just a bit late, then? <laughs> Positively mutinous. That's a word I wouldn't like to use too lightly, sir. Not when you've seen these signals. What? Yeah, there, let me see him. To Squadron Office Portsmouth, imperative you inform the world that we intend claiming the boat as a prize. <laughs> Signed, Pertwee. Good heavens. <laughs> Lummy! He's gone round the proverbial. <laughs> What's the other signal? Reply from Squadron Officer. Here. Before taking action reclaiming boat, is there no alternative you'd settle for? I say, sir, this looks jolly ugly. So it does. I can't believe the chief of mutiny like this. Wonder why Povey hasn't made a signal to me warning us. With due respect, sir, he can't. The foggle toggle on transmitter's been broke. What? Good Lord. Who by? I don't know, sir. It happened just after the last signal came in. <coughs> I just popped out to deliver it, and when I came back, it were broke. Was there anybody near the communications room? Well, yes, sir. Abel Seaman Johnson. He scarped off just as I got there. I see. It looks bad. Get back to your duties, Ginger. And no word of the chief. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Sabotage now, eh? My word, number one, it looks as if this crew of yours really means business. It does indeed. It could be very dangerous. Uh, sir, 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 sir. Uh, um, might I make a su 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 suggestion, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Certainly. <laughs> What is it? Well, sir, just in case this mutiny looks like coming off, couldn't we have the sea boat provisioned up? Then we could make Fisker in that. Wise precaution, Mr. Phillips. Yes, sir. Very wise. I wonder how you came to think of it. Well, sir, when people are frightened of death, they do very strange things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look out! The mutiny! Start it! Take cover! Why, they're terribly sorry. I dropped them. Oh. <laughs> 
What on earth are you doing, Amelia? Well, I was just gathering up a few bottles to provision the seabed and some of them sort of slipped. Yeah, lovely. That's a relief. <laughs> uh, I thought the rough stuff had started. Yes, so did I. You know, our nerves are in a shocking state. I just can't believe the chief would do this. Neither can I, sir. I think there must be some other explanation than mutiny. I wish there was, sir, but I've just remembered something else. Sir, sir, something, something I overheard. When? When Pertwee was on the bridge alone, sir. Just as I got to the bridge, I heard him say to Johnson that something was a risk they had to take, and they had to get possession of the boat somehow. Oh, good gracious. <laughs> Any other choice little titbits of glad tidings you've forgotten to tell me about? No, sir, no, sir. Except for the last few days, I've been expecting him to call me Mr. Christian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If he makes one more move, we'll take to the sea boat, and as soon as we get to Fisco, we'll get Admiralty to put a stop to this little game. I just can't understand it, sir. I mean, it's just not like him. I thought we were his friends. I'm sure we are. I don't suppose he's the slightest intention of taking over the boat. <laughs> Come in. I'm... Uh... I'm sorry to bother you, sir. It's a little matter of maritime law, sir. I wonder if you could... Get it put. <laughs> what is it, Chief? Well, sir, when a boat changes hands, do you have to re-register it, Lord? <laughs> Come in, Marilyn. <laughs> I mean, who is it? It's me, Chief. Wake up. Something's happened. Well, let it. I'm going back to Marilyn. No, you can't. Everybody's gone. Everybody's gone? Wait, wait a minute. What are, you, what are you talking about, everybody's gone? There isn't another person aboard except us. They've all disappeared in the night. What? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. That's what it is, isn't it? Hey? Isn't it? Hey? <laughs> You're, you're pulling cheap as who, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not, you know. They've all gone. I, they, they, they can't attack. They can't, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't. <laughs> Come on, let's have a look. Hello? Oh. <laughs> Anyone at all? Oh. <laughs> Peekaboo! <laughs> was a stern reply. <laughs> They've gone, and I'll tell you someone else has gone as well. What? The sea boat and most of the rafts. Well, obviously, I mean, if they've abandoned ship and forgotten us, they must have taken the boat and the rafts in order to... Help! <laughs> on fire we must have a leak help <laughs> we'll we'll go down like a stew we've been owed and never been to <laughs> well, what are we going to do then we... keep calm johnson keep, 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 keep calm <laughs> nothing's to be gained by getting into a panic darling all we got to do is abandon ship <laughs> women and pet we first out the road, Pat, so get out of the road. Where's the nearest raft? Well, there's one aft. Good lad, that's mine. Well, what about mine? You'll find another one. I'm not chancing your weight on Pertwee's raft, even if it is meant to 20 people. Get out. <laughs> but that's the only one left, Chief. Oh, all right, then. But let's get the flaming thing launched. Yeah. Pertwee don't want no dates with a mermaid. Besides, somebody's got to do the paddling. <laughs> I've a good mind to stay aboard now, you rotten. Water. Water. I can't go on much longer. Water. Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Phillips. You had some ten minutes ago. <laughs> Perhaps he wants a shave. <laughs> Seems an extraordinary thing to 
you ask for anyway must have gone right off his trump. <laughs> Understandable, though. I mean, we have been drifting about for rather a long time. <laughs> yes, we ought to have sighted Fisker yesterday. Well, we must be on course, sir. I was navigating by the sun. Fisker is due east, so all we had to do was follow it. Follow it? Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, where does the sun rise? Mm, oh, any clock knows that. <laughs> it rises in the west and sets in the east. <laughs> Why are you all looking at me like that? <laughs> it rises in the east and sets in the west, idiot. Well, it's hardly my fault if it's been changed, is it? <laughs> I wasn't notified. Uh, I say, you chaps, I know I'm only the captain, but how about somebody else having a row? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just about done. Oh. Good heavens, I'd completely forgotten. Mummy, yes. He's been rowing ever since we abandoned ships. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I know it, old fruit. Where I haven't got blisters, I've got corns. <laughs> and where I've got corns is going to remain on the secret list. <laughs> oh, cheer up, sir. I'm sure we'll sight land as soon as the dawn breaks. Oh, splendid. Dawn can break as soon as it lights. It's freezing. Yeah. And why don't we have a little something to keep the cold out? I remembered my corkscrew. <laughs> um, sir, sir, look, look. Well, so it's, it's, it's the dawn, sir. Dawn's coming up. Well, tell her to get away. There's no room in the boat. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, any sign of land? No, 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 I don't think... Uh, y yes, yes, look, there. It is. Look straight ahead. Oh, yes, so there is. But that can't be Fisker. Surely it's not big enough. It's difficult to see yet, sir. At present, it looks more like a long grey wall. Or a... Mr. Phillips... That's not land, it's the side of Trout Bridge. What? Oh, Lummy, they must have been following us. <laughs> they haven't, you know. It means you steered us in a complete circle. Really? I say, how clever of me. <laughs> oh, well done, Leslie. Leslie will be well done, all right, if the mutineers are still aboard. Well, there can't be many of them, because most of them left about the same time as we did. What? Didn't I tell you? When we left, I happened to look back to wave a last farewell to my delicious luggage, and there were rafts popping up all over the water. It was very pretty. Very odd. Rafts look as though they're all stowed aboard now. There's one raft missing aft, sir. Yes. Well, we'd better approach with caution. We don't want to give them the slightest excuse to open fire on us. Look, look, back. What? Get down, all of you. Don't move. What is it, sir? What happened? Well, sir, I'm not sure yet. There's something... Something trying to sneak up on us from the starboard side. No, sir, sir. We'll come around the stern in a oh. second. <coughs> it's coming round. Yes. It's coming round. Oh, sir, sir. Get down, men, get down. But, 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 but perhaps... Wait a second in your moment. Perhaps, sir. Unarmed. Oh. Chief Petty Officer Pertwee, I'm charging you with inciting a mutiny. What? Mutiny? What are you, what are you talking about, sir? Mutiny? There's, a, there's only me and Faps over here, sir. You ran away from it, sir. You left us like two babes in the womb. <laughs> ran away and left you. Let's sort this out on board before we all freeze to death. Oh, what absolutely cracking good we, sir. It'll give me a chance to fix that foggle toggle I broke. You broke the tenor base? Yes. I was trying to adjust it again, and I used rather too much force. <laughs> I see. You know, Mr. Phillips, I've got a nasty suspicion there's been a terrible misunderstanding. Well, I don't know any more, sir. But look, couldn't we sort of sort it out on board so we're starving? And with Pat so here, sir, it could be very nasty. <laughs> I think he's eaten half the raft already. <laughs> right, Chief, get aboard. Here they come, sir. Pompey's prodigal sons are home. Mm, at last. Why is it whenever those idiots put to sea, they vanish and half the neighbors of the world have to search for them? Well, the Admiral thought they'd gone behind the steel curtain. Steel? Don't you mean iron curtain? No, probably, sir, but you know the Admiral. He never does get things quite right. Neither do those idiots. Why, well, look at their way they're 
If you look out, run for it. They'll never stop in time. Oh, run, woman, oh, run. Down, everybody, down. <laughs> All ashore that's going ashore. <laughs> May I suggest that the last command should have been stop engines and not what ho she bumps? Look at that, damn it. Just had a refit and there's hardly a lick of paint left anywhere. It's absolutely monstrous. What on earth's been going on? Apart from a couple of ridiculous signals about some competition or other, we haven't had a word from you. Where the blue brithering brick dust have you been? Um, Fisker Island, sir. Oh, well, I suppose that's something. I wouldn't have been at all surprised if you'd brought the governor and his wife back with you. What's wrong with you, your hand with my luggage? It's all the crap Oh, no. Oh, Lummy. I knew we'd forgotten to do something. Oh, well, sir, we, we have had rather a trying time. Yeah, well, they can thumping, we'll have another one. You can put to sea again at once and don't come back till you've delivered the governor to Fisker. Aye, aye, sir. Well, the only chance. Come, go, go! Go, it's me leg! Go! The twin ship screws have got me again. Please stop that at once. But I can't, sir. We've got to claim our prize. I'm so sorry, Chief, but I forgot to give it to you. I've got a letter here for you from the Daily World. Oh, never mind that now. I'm going to bore all of you. Oh, uh, just a minute. Sir, we must know what they've won. Or rather, if, if it's the missing machine, could I borrow it for a bit? I've got potatoes in all my socks. <laughs> oh, well, it won't be the knitting machine, sir. It'll be the boat. No, we particularly want... It's a carve-up, that's what it is. It's a dirty great carve-up of this. Look at that, we've been robbed. Actually, we've been robbed. What's the matter? Haven't you won the boat? No, sir, not the boat. That steaming great fat knit. He didn't read all of it. The first prize isn't a boat, it's a boat trip. And we've won it. <laughs> yeah, you know where it's to, don't you? A paid cruise for two to Fisker Island. <laughs> oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> right, Swindle, this is. Wait till I get my hands on that podgy pocket. What's talking. going on? Oh, I am. I'll tell you what it's all about. Oh, oh it's you, sir. Hello, sir. Well, well, well. <laughs> the very man. I've got a little proposition to make, sir. Now then, how about a luxury cruise for you and Mrs. Governor to Fisker Island? 20 nickel on deposit will do. Very, very nice, sir. When wages on duty day and night. A couple of seats at the captain's table. Don't delay. She's sailing today. <laughs> And that was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Abel Seaman Johnson was played by Ronnie Barker, Captain Povey was Richard Caldicott, Sir Willoughby Todd Hunter Brown was Tony Evans, Lady Todd Hunter Brown was Heather Chasen, and Lieutenant Bates was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray. <laughs> Teaching methods at school seem to have changed since my day. My daughter Carolyn proudly informs me that the telephone was invented by Charles Dickens. There's 80 quid a term, too. Well, I mean, in my day, it was invented by a chap called Edison Lighthouse. But whoever invented the beastly thing, it never seems to bring good news to Captain Povey in the squadron office. Captain Povey's office? This is intelligent speaking. <laughs> hmm. You could have fooled me. And that's what everybody says. Oh, put Commander Bracewell on. One moment. Captain Povey, it's Commander Bracewell of Intelligence. Um, hello? Captain Povey here. Oh, Bracewell here. Captain Povey, eh? Good golly wogs, if they're promoting crap like you, there's hope for all of us. What? <laughs> that I doubt. Commander Bracewell? Oh, don't start pulling the old rank on me, old man. I've got a little something for you. Oh, what's that? 
A bomb. <laughs> now back the barn. A bomb? Rather, huh? You know that Patani Land Navy frigate in your squadron? Well, some hothead has phoned us to say he's planted a bomb in her somewhere. Oh, good grief, Raymond. He can't have it. He mustn't have it. He must take it back at once. I can't be responsible. Bags for... the dial. Bags of panic. <laughs> <laughs> a false alarm, but you'd better take a butcher's over her. Me? Go anywhere near her now that... I mean, I'm, I'm hardly qualified for bomb hunting, Commander. The... You're a good man. Good man. Hope you'll find it in time. I'd hate you to be responsible for an international situation between the Patarniland government and ourselves. <laughs> Doodly by. What? What? Hello? Hello? Don't bother. He's hung up on me. This is an emergency. I must see the officers of the Patani Land Navy on that beastly figure of theirs at once. Well, they're waiting outside, sir. You have an appointment to see them about their training exercise with Troutbridge. What? Oh, good heavens, so I have. Oh, if there had to be a bomb, why couldn't the maniac have planted it in Troutbridge instead? Oh, well, send him in at once, please. Aye, aye, sir. Will you come in, please, gentlemen? Oh, we shall be only too hysterical to enter your fine and business. Business as usual, officers. By all means. With pleasure. Most certainly. At once. Right now. How do? How do? And one more. How, How do? do? <laughs> oh, good grief. I, 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 I mean, good afternoon, gentlemen. May I take this opportunity of saying how delighted I am to see you in my, uh, uh, my humble place of work. Uh -huh. And we, in our turn, bring fine and resounding greetings from the Republic of Putani Land. Long live the Republic. Bong ho! <laughs> and to say how delighted we are to see you in your truly colossal and astounding old workhouse. Bong ho! Bong ho! And one more! Bong, bong ho! ho. <laughs> what? I think it's your turn for a bung ho, sir. Oh, yes, and uh, uh, bung ho to you, I'm uh, sure. I, um, I don't believe I've had the pleasure of knowing your rank and names. I, I understand your navy has slightly different titles. Oh, my golly, yes. That is indeed the suitcase. <laughs> this is my good mate, Sub-Lieutenant General Samuel Pepys Washington Burt. What? Yes. Yeah. And I, my good self, personally, me, I'm Lieutenant Managing Director Harold Goldfall. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't believe it. I, I just don't believe it. But you, you can't be sub-lieutenant generals and lieutenant managing directors. Oh, yes. This has been duly arranged by Patani Land Navy's boss, Admiral Big Noise Foreman Sir Francis Duck II. <laughs> Standard collapse. <laughs> Carry off. Thank you. Oh, it's unbelievable. I, I, I uh, no, well, yes, yes. Uh, to business, Mr. Uh, uh, the, the golf ball. Um, Thank you. I understand there may be a little trouble aboard your frigate. No, oh, nothing to worry about, of course. I, I am arranging for our naval police to take care of the matter at once. Oh, what is the nature of this fine and magnificent trouble we are delighted to have with you, Thank you. Well, it's probably just a hoax, oh. but... Uh, you may have a bomb aboard. In that case, Mr. Samuel Pepys, Washington Burt, and I, my good self, personally me, Harold Gulfall, do you the utmost pleasure in resigning from our magnificent daddy frigate <laughs> and wish to report to your laborious exchange at full tilt? No, 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 you can't do that, no. Now, assuming the police have cleared your ship, oh. we've arranged for you to go out on a training exercise at 0900 tomorrow. And Sub-Lieutenant Phillips of Trout Bridge will be on your bridge to assist you in navigation. And having a bomb aboard will be nothing compared to having him aboard. Quite. Uh, yeah, I mean, quiet. Uh, 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 Ren Chasen, have you nothing else you could be doing? Well, sir, I could go back to quarters and change. I'm being taken to the pictures this evening. Yes, well, then, for goodness sake, go. I had quite enough on my plate at present without your whimsical remarks. Oh, aye, aye, sir. Good night, sir. Oh, good night. And good night, gentlemen. Bung ho! Bung ho! And one more. Bong ho! <laughs> Long live the Republic, I'm sure. Well, I don't know about you two, but I thought the main picture was absolutely ridiculous. Oh, did you? I enjoyed it. I thought it was very funny. So did I. What was wrong with it? Well, the title for a start. Oh, very apt, I thought. I mean, what else could you have called it but Carry On Undertaker? <laughs> I think I 
I know what Leslie didn't like. It was that chap who played the silly ass hearse driver. Oh, you mean the blonde bloke with the little moustache and the stupid grin? <laughs> the chap who kept saying, oh, lummy. Yes, that's the one. He was very poor. Yes, very poor. Now, isn't that odd? I liked him. <laughs> in fact, I thought he was the only good thing in the film. Mm, no accounting for taste, I suppose. Let's go in here and have a cup of coffee. Mm, judging by the name, El Beelzebub, we'll get a spoonful of coffee under a cupful of trough. Yes, does look a bit she-she outside, doesn't it? Yes, sir, but unfortunately, they've got he-he waiters inside. <laughs> Trust you to notice that. It'll be a long time before I forget that burst of speed you put on down the gangway when you saw that overdeveloped usherette in the interval. Well, I thought you might like an ice cream. One ice cream each, yes. We didn't expect you to come back with four dozen. <laughs> well, she, she sort of talked me into them. I mean, if you'd seen her poor little blue frostbitten putties... You would have brought the tray load, too. Yes, possibly, but we wouldn't have brought the actual tray back as well. <laughs> right, Ninny, you look trotting up the gangway with that. Well, I sold a chalk ice in the eighth row. <laughs> I'm sure Admiralty will be delighted. Excuse me, sir. How would you like your coffee? In a cup. <laughs> oh, I see, yes. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, two black and one white. Two black and one white. Mm -hmm. Coming up. What did you think of the second picture, Stephen? Hmm? The second picture. Oh, blood in the soot. Oh, very poor. Mm -hmm. Your coffee, sir. Six shillings, please. Good gracious. I don't know how you can do it at the price. They're having a sale. <laughs> you know, there was only one thing that bothered me about that second picture. I mean, the way those, those frontier guards let Ivan through with that homemade bomb. Well, Ivan didn't know he'd got it, did he? All he thought he'd got was a packet of biscuits. And that's another thing. I mean, as if a chap would accept a packet of biscuits from a complete strange. I mean, it's nonsense. <laughs> Besides, the, the packet was probably ticking all the time. Well, then he may have thought they were clockolid biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know you ought to be on the picture, Stephen. Really? Yes, sure. It's so much funnier than that blonde chap with the moustache and keeps saying... <laughs> I, um, I think I'll go to the bar and get some more coffee. Excuse me. Uh, garçon? Um, mate to the coffee bar. Yes, sir. Uh, could we have some more coffee? Uh, one whack, two blights. Uh, no, no, no. No, same as before, but the other way round. Of course, sir. Would the gentleman by any chance be on HMS Trout Bridge? No, Trout Bridge, actually. I'm the navigation officer. Such a responsibility. One does one's little best. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm training some chaps from Botaniland tomorrow. You are really going on the Botaniland ship yourself? Sir? Oh, yes. I shall be aboard, facing the hazards of the mighty deep, out there, alone, wondering where we are. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, the, uh, propping up the bar. Please... Please, I must check. You are absolutely sure you will be on the Botaniland ship tomorrow? What? Yes, yes, of course I am. Why? Sir, I wish to make you a little present before you sail. I have it here under the counter. For me? Oh, that's jolly civil. Oh, what a lovely packet of biscuits. <laughs> oh, a chap gets pretty peckish on the bridge sometimes. What sort of biscuits are they? Oh, they are a new sort, sir. They have a surprise feeling. Do they really? Oh, I shall look forward to them. Just one thing, my friend. Mm -hmm. You won't open them until you are on the Potaniland ship, will you? Well, I was thinking of trying just one now. No, 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 no. <laughs> right, I I'll say them. Now, if we could have those fresh coffees, I, I must be getting back to my friends. <laughs> Right, left hand down a bit, Goldstein. Left hand down a bit it is, Chief. Good lad. You're coming along well. As I must say that between the both of you, I've hardly noticed Mr. Phillips' absence. Oh, well, I have, sir. Trying to keep on station with that Patani land frigate is sheer murder. Yeah, well, they are supposed to be learning, you know. Well, that's as maybe, sir. But teacher's never exactly been top of the class himself, has he? <laughs> mm, true. There's no need for you to take the mickey out of the dunce of Dartmouth. Well, now, now that, 
That's something I wanted to talk to you about, sir. Mm, what is? Uh, Dartmouth, sir. I, I wanted to know, sir. I wanted to know, sir. Yes, well, that is. <laughs> well, sir, what would you say were my chances of ever becoming an officer, sir? <laughs> What, in your lifetime? <laughs> well, about one in 50 million, I should think. On your eat, on your eat, like everything else. Dartmouth is a flipping clothes shop. I don't get one rule for the rich, one rule for the poor. Now, now, now wait a minute, Chief. Before you start your up the workers bit, remember your, your service record isn't exactly unblemished. Well, I mean... There may have been the odd grave miscarriage of justice from time to time, sir. I agree, yeah, I agree to that. But Mr. Phillips has dropped the odd clangor or two in his time as well, hasn't he? Ah, but he took the precaution of becoming an officer before he dropped them, Chief. <laughs> um, why this sudden desire for a commission, anyway? Well, sir, it's, um, well, sir, um, left hand out of it, Goldstein. Left hand down of it, it is, Admiral. <laughs> That'll do, Skippy. Well, it, it's uh, what you might call, uh, you know, uh, personal reason. Oh, yes, yes, I see. Uh, in that case, I, I won't inquire into them. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I hope you didn't think I was um, prying. No, sir. No, no. Certainly not, sir, prying. No, sir. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Steady at that, Goldstein. Steady at that, it is, sir. They're certainly steering a somewhat erratic course, aren't they? Well, Mr. Phillips probably has to go through half a dozen bungholes <laughs> before they shove their poor and magnificent left hands down a bit, sir. Yes. Left hand down with it, is, sir. No, no, scrub tag. <laughs> well, I wasn't talking to you, you steaming Welsh rabbit. Um, Chief. Sir? You're quite sure you didn't think I was prying over those personal reasons just now, aren't you? Oh, quite. Quite, sir, yes. Good. Never, ever, never entered my bond, sir. Uh, good. Well, carry on. Why, aren't they? Of course, if I knew what they were, it would help. I very much doubt it, sir. No, 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 no problem, not. No, no, sir. No, sir. No. <laughs> of course, you appreciate that not knowing is very difficult for me to judge. <laughs> <laughs> no, quite, sir. Quite, quite so, sir. Quite so, sir. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> yes. <whistles> Far be it for me to pry, of course. Of course, sir. Of course, sir. Perkway, I can't stand it any longer. Why do you want to be an officer? <laughs> well, it's not this. Sir. I've sort of got a girlfriend, sir. Only, well, only I haven't, if you understand my meaning. Yes, yes, that's clear enough. Yeah, well, it's this way, sir. You see, she won't go out with no common sailor, sir. She reckons she's officer material only. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, watch your stern, Goldstein. They're swinging about a bit again. Uh, a lovely bit of bench she is. <laughs> lovely. She flogs the horses in a pompey cinema. Good heavens, not the one showing carry-on Undertaker and blood in the soot. Yeah, that's the one, sir. You weren't there last night by any chance, were you? Yes, Mr. Phillips and I took Heather. Ghastly film. Well, I didn't notice the film, sir. I was waiting for the interval. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. Is that when she told you that she'd only go out with an officer? Well, I never got a chance to speak to her, sir. Just as I was going to, some nit came up and bought about four dozen ices. <laughs> and not only that, it took her tray away. You know what she had to do? She had to go back to torch waving in the ball coney. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, oh, well, of course, I, I hung on for a bit and... She hadn't come back. I left halfway through blood in the soot. 
Mm, I don't blame you. It would all lift, but all if that crocodile would have just been given the bomb in the packet of biscuits. <laughs> well, he didn't know it was a bomb. I mean, they, they were just given to him in a cafe. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty likely, isn't it? I'll tell you what I'd do if I had a bomb and a packet of biscuits. I'd have given them to that greedy guy who brought all those flaming ices off my girlfriend. <laughs> well, I shouldn't worry too much about her, you know, Chief. But she's lovely, sir. Yes, possibly, but that's not everything, you know. I doubt if any woman's worth four years' hard slog at Dartmouth to get a commission. Four years? I thought it only took a week. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Hmm? Look, quick. Oh, good heavens. What are Mr. Phillips and those fools doing now? I think they're going to ram us, sir. Pull it, boat. Pull it, boat. No, no, it's all right. Out of port. Out of port. No, no, it's all right. Little Mrs. Bond, though. Look out. No, everybody down. <laughs> Stop engines. <laughs> Stop engines with a magnificent halt one, two, it is. Glorious British Naval gentlemen, sir. And may I add my hearty best congratulations on the truly fine and magnificent display of Crouch in the Middle, demonstrated <laughs> by our glorious British Navy gentlemen, sir. Bravo. Bravo. And one more. Bravo. Bravo. Mr. Phillips, what on earth do you think you're doing? I'm uh, giving you a fine and magnificent crouch in the middle, sir. Uh, 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 crouching you in your fine and magnificence. Uh, no, uh, Never mind. You better reverse engines and stand to and come over on the breeches, boy. I want a word or two with you. Right, sir. I shan't be very... Breeches, boy? Me, sir? No, thanks. Oh, go on. You'll love it, Mr. Phillips, sir. A nice ride in a chair on a piece of string. <laughs> oh, yes, this is a truly gigantic idea. Well, get going, Mr. Phillips. What are you waiting for? Courage. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, don't be such a wet blanket. It's not wet blankets I'm bothering about, sir. It's wet breeches. <laughs> if I get dunked, don't blame me if I drip all over your carpet. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, sir. Mr. Phillips won't be long now, sir. Splendid. So they finally got the line across, then. Oh, yes, sir. They fired one line through the petty officer's mess porthole, <laughs> one straight up and down our funnel, <laughs> and the last one, Abel Seaman Goldstein, caught, sir. Right in his left turn. Yes, very nasty. <laughs> well, I'm glad they finally made it. Uh, bridge, number one here. Wireless room, sir. Urgent signal from Captain Forby, sir. Mm, he never sends any other kind. Uh, what is it? About that bomb scare in the Badaniland boat, sir. He reckons they've had another call to say that the bomb has been taken aboard since the Navy police searched her, sir. Oh, dear. Well, I expect it's just another false alarm, but I'll have a word with Mr. Phillips when he arrives. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir, but couldn't we just forget the old thing, sir? I mean, just, you know, uh, sort of steam away and leave them behind? <laughs> Certainly not. But it's not fair, sir. I mean, we'd never find it. Bombs don't look like bombs these days. Bombs don't do bombs. <laughs> now, stop panicking. But they don't, sir. But remember, remember poor Ivan in that blood in the clock cook soot film. <laughs> Instead of a packet of rich digestive, he got afternoon TNT biscuits. <laughs> Oh, look at me. I'm half drowned. Mm, so you are. Perhaps they'll drown the other half on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very funny, sir. Yes, it's all very well for you to laugh, but I should probably get pneumonia. My resistance must be pretty low. Oh, why? Mm, well, I haven't had anything to eat. All they do is they serve that national dish on that other boat. Curried rubber tree on rice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very appetizer call, I'm sure, sir. Mm. Enjoyable, isn't it? In a way, I'm glad I had to come across. At least I can take back this packet of biscuits I left in my cabin. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Why have you all gone white? <laughs> well... <coughs> Where'd you get those biscuits from, sir? These? Oh, they were a present. A present? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, that foreign chap in the cafe gave them to me. Abandoned ship? Behind <laughs> the doors, pet, please go over the side. Come back here at once. I'm sure they're perfectly normal biscuits. Mm, well, of course they are. Would you like one? I'll just open the packet. No, 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 don't touch them. No, your petty burn may go off petty bangs. <laughs> no, no, be quiet, Chief. Yes. Um, just the same, I shouldn't bother to open the packet just now. Oh, it's no trouble at all, so I'd like you to try one. The foreign chap said they had a surprise filling. What? <laughs> I come out! Chief, I... will you stop that? Besides, Mr. Phillips is just leaving. Am I? Well, I've only just got here. I mean, I thought you wanted the chat, sir. Yes, I did, but I, I think it can wait a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you better get back in the breeches, boy. The weather looks as if it may get pretty windy before long. Oh, I shouldn't think it'll blow up yet a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Phillips, I, I, I do wish you'd choose your words a bit more carefully, sir. What's the matter with you uh, two? Nothing, Mr. Phillips, nothing at all. Now, you get back to the Botanyland ship and let's all get back to Pompey. C couldn't we let them go back on their own, sir? That breeches boy trip isn't good for a chap. It's like sitting on a deck chair in your bath. <laughs> yeah, possibly, but we had enough trouble with their navigation when you were with them. I'm not chancing a return trip with them on their own. Oh, uh, well, if Leslie is needed, what can Leslie say? Goodbye. <laughs> yes, there you are, sir. This way out. All right, but I want to make sure I've got everything. Yes, sir, you have. Ta -da, sir. <laughs> no, I haven't. I put my biscuits down somewhere. Ah! <laughs> Don't nobody move. Mind when you put your feet. It's all right. I've got them. I must have dropped them on the deck. I hope they haven't broken. Oh, I doubt it, Mr. Phillips. I think we should have known if they had. <laughs> Excuse me, Lieutenant Managing Director Harold Garfbar, sir. Our truly fine and wholesome wireless room, Jen, uh. has also received a message of great urgency intended for the glorious British Royal Navy frigate Trap Brunch. Oh. What is this message of great urgency informing who? What about then? It is about the bomb bank we no longer have got, but probably have after all. Oh, my golly. It must have been done in a fine old disguise, oh. like the packet of biscuits given to poor Ivan in bioscope pictures seen by your good self. Ah, and your good self. Last night. What a night. Ahoy there! Can't you pull me across any faster? Bung ho! With apologies for Tarnilan sailors going flat out fit to bust already. Oh, mommy, I'm getting soaked. Has Patani Land fellow officer and upstanding gent noticed what pastel glorious British Royal Navy gentleman is holding while sitting in his little boy breeches, huh? <laughs> no, my lad, I had not noticed. But now that you have pointed out this splendid operation, I observe that he seems to be holding a packet of biscuit bombang, remarkably like poor Ivan in bioscope. He stopped even ho! He stopped even ho! Can I say, why have I stopped? I'm not in the station yet. Pull me in. Without standing regret, this we cannot do. And suggest you return to glorious British Royal Navy frigate with much urgency. But they've only just sent me here. Then perhaps you could stay where you are, in the middle. <laughs> what? Oh, come off it, you chap. You can't leave Leslie out here like a load of washing. <laughs> hey, come back. I've got the drifter. I tried to, though. Come back. I've got to move on, you chaps. I'm freezing. It's no use, Mr. Phillips, sir. The Batoni landers have tied a knot in the roof. We can't pull you in, sir. But what do we do now? I've tried the loud hailer, but they won't answer. Well, they must have been to see the same film, sir. They don't want him or his biscuits aboard any more than we do. Oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I know. I wonder if they'd undo the knot if we get him to drop his packet of biscuits. Well, it's worth a try, sir. Mr. Phillips, sir! Drop your biscuits, sir! <laughs> What? Not likely. I shall probably freeze to death, but I'm not going to starve to death as well. Well, there's only one thing for it. We shall just have to carry him back to Pompey like that. Hey? What? What out there, sir? Slung between us in this weather? <laughs> <laughs> he'd, he'd finish up like an abominable snowman and a flat axe. <laughs> well, if we do drop him in the sea, at least we can fish him out again. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a storm coming up.
How right you are. We'd better get underway. I'll give the Patani landers a shout at the loud hailer and see if they're prepared to get the other end of our clothesline back to Pompey. Hey, hurry up and do something, you chaps. It's starting to rain. I knew it. Pneumonia. Get me home. Get me home. She. Bless you, Leslie. <laughs> Have another grape, sir. They're cake grapes. <laughs> I don't care what they are. I feel terrible. Oh, cheer up, Mr. Phillips. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. How? <laughs> That's what I ask. How? It could have been further. Yes, yes, there is that. Further? Oh, thank you very much. Forty miles of being dipped in the sea, sandwiched between ships and almost struck by lightning was far enough for me. <laughs> On top of everything else, I... I lost my biscuits. Ah, uh, what a shine. <laughs> Still, perhaps the orderly will let you have some curried rubber tree on rice instead. Mmm, delicious. Mm. Well, come along. I think we ought to let Mr. Phillips get some rest. Oh, I don't see why, so He's been sitting down all day. <laughs> oh, I know what's wrong with you lot. You're warped. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Hmm? We found these in the pocket of your uniform, sir. They're a bit damp, I'm afraid. Oh, well done. I'll dry them by the radiator. I'll dry what, sir? My packet of biscuits. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're not coming very handy, sir, to get package of the help! <laughs> President, time's over, which way out? Please, in some emergency seats. Then we'll back us out of the road with your trolley. And we coming through. ding a ling a ling a ling Everybody out! <laughs> That was John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer. Captain Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Heather was Heather Chasen, and the two Patani landers were played by Ronnie Barker and Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. <laughs> <laughs>